And we are now live streaming and recording. And just a reminder to all of the panelists, if you could mute yourself when you are not speaking, that would be appreciated. Leo, please go ahead and begin. Thank you very much. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, I'd like to call this meeting of the Civilian Oversight Commission um, to order. I trust that you and your families are doing well. Um, I want to recognize the two deputies currently recovering from their injuries when they were shot sitting in their patrol vehicle. Um, they were shot multiple times on September the, the 12th. Um, our thoughts are with you and your families. Um, before we um, actually begin, um, Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas is here um, and um, he wants to address all of us about recent activities of the Sheriff's Department. Um, welcome, Supervisor uh, Ridley Thomas, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and to the uh, Commission. Um, Thank you for the opportunity on behalf of the board just to share a few uh, insights that I think uh, should be interpreted as affirmative of the work of the Oversight Commission uh, since its inception. Before doing so, I wish to associate myself with the uh, remarks made by you, Madam Chair, with respect to uh, the two deputies who were in the line of duty carrying out uh, their responsibilities and were ambushed. Um, uh, nothing uh, that I can say that's more profoundly disturbing than an attack on those men and women who are seeking to serve and protect our respective communities. And so it is on behalf of people of this county, specifically the second supervisorial district where uh, this incident place that we uh, express a profound degree of regard for their lives, and the lives of their family, uh, and uh, urge that the persons responsible uh, be swiftly and appropriately, properly apprehended and brought to justice. It seems to me that's uh, in line with uh, the very reason for having uh, a citizen's oversight commission uh, to be outward facing, to maximize transparency, to cause the community at large to know what is going on in the public safety arena, specifically, Madam Chair and Commissioners, that, that of the role of, of the Sheriff's Department itself. Uh, this body is a product of the March 4 reform in uh, Los Angeles County as it relates to public safety and specifically the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department, Sheriff's Department. Uh, we respect uh, the fact uh, that this is tough work and we want to uh, at the top say that to each one of you, thank you for your service. Uh, it is critically important. It doesn't assume that everyone agrees all the time, but it does assume that there is engagement that is defined by civility, accountability, and transparency. Your collaboration with your executive director, your collaboration with the Office of the Inspector General, all matter, and it was the intent of the Board of Supervisors as a part of the overall statement we make about police accountability and transparency in a better Los Angeles County. Uh, we take a stand that is uh, non-negotiable about the rights of our citizenry, the rights of our residences in terms of the constitutional protections that we are to be afforded. Uh, we take a, a clear a view with respect to the entirety of the sets of controversy and vision and tension uh, with the uh, department of the sheriff, uh, specifically uh, the current sheriff 
um, and uh, the previous share. We, we realize that this hasn't been um, uh, all that rosy, but we understand that your role is fundamentally important to the people of this county. That's why you are here and from which you should not retreat, no matter what anybody says otherwise. You are a part of what it means to reform uh, the law enforcement elements in this county. That's your role. And it is clear in terms of how you were brought into existence. Let me just hasten to make the following observations. Uh, the Office of Diversion and Reentry came into being in the same space of the Oversight Commission, seeking, seeking to expand the safety net and maximize public safety at the same time. It is later than that the discussion about alternatives to incarceration uh, came into uh, focus. What, from a fiscally responsible perspective, so that we can make sure that persons who are mentally ill are not finding themselves languishing in Los Angeles County jail system. And we have done well in that regard. And I appreciate the spotlight that the commission has put on that. The issue with body-worn cameras, you've worked on that. And it's been complimentary and very important. The public would not know as much about what's going on in the Sheriff's Department were it not for the existence of this commission. I want to underscore that. Uh, the work that's being done on the family assistance uh, program that's on the agenda for next week of the Board of Supervisors. You wrote the report that made it clear that this was a compelling example of how uh, the County of Los Angeles should step forth in the, into the 21st century and practice humane uh, behavior with respect to those who have been traumatized by uh, fatalities and more within the context of interfacing with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, the notion that we have evolved to a policy framework uh, that speaks to the matter of how we think of jail care first and jail last is an expression, Madam Chair and Commissioners, of where we ought to be. And the board has unanimously advanced that perspective. And we want to affirm you in terms of your way of embracing that. It is not contrary to what the sheriff said at the uh, board meeting on this past Tuesday. It is not a policy that advances offenders first and victims last. It is care first and jail last. There's a distinction to be made of consequence. And the uh, assertion to the contrary can be contradicted at any point. This commission and the board has sought to represent on behalf of the uh, people of this county, their constitutional rights and the like. And so we don't take the position that we need to hammer the uh, Sheriff's Department uh, for sport for recreation. We stand in terms of advancing and protecting constitutional rights uh, of journalists, First Amendment rights. We stand and take the position that human rights ought to be celebrated and protected. And we take the position that public safety is fundamental in the county of Los Angeles. And each one of us knows and appreciates that. And so I just simply believe that your role has been value added any way it can be uh, described. And were, the, were it not for your presence, the outward facing uh, manner in which uh, the public now has an opportunity to see and to know uh, what is going on and the policy making that you've done is important. Let me conclude by saying the anti-racist policy framework that the uh, County of Los Angeles is embarking on and braced unanimously uh, by the Board of Supervisors uh, uh, just last month for the first time uh, in the board's over 170 years existence uh, has said we're going to do a self-examination of what it means to be equitable along racial lines in a significant way through all departments and my hasten to make the point 
That includes the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. No exceptions to the policy. Madam Chair, we thank you for the opportunity to make these remarks and we appreciate the work that you are doing and trust that the balance of the meeting today will be productive. Thank you so much, Supervisor. Um, we welcome your, um, your wise counsel. We welcome your support. Um, and um, as um, we learned from a uh, September 3rd town hall meeting, um, we listen in the community and they, um, much of what we were told uh, by members of the public during that meeting really has resulted in some of the matters that are on the agenda today. Yes. So um, we, um, we welcome um, anything that we can do to um, uh, mediate, uh, to be uh, responsive to the community, uh, and that's the community is large. Um, yes. Public safety, the board, um, we are here to, um, to actively take a role and um, we, as I said, we welcome the board's support. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Um, if we could um, now turn to um, the, the formal part of the meeting, um, I um, want to welcome all of you here. Um, this, um, our next meeting will be Thursday, October 15th. Um, in, in lieu of a, a second meeting during the month, we've made the decision that um, the, uh, the second Thursday of the month is a, is a good opportunity for the commission's ad hoc committees um, to meet, to hold their committee meetings um, because the ad hoc committees really are the backbone of what we do. Um, and uh, before we get started, everything is, seems to be a preface this morning. Um, I want to make a short remark concerning public comment. It's critical that we hear from you, the members of the public. As I said earlier, we learned quite a lot from public comment at the town hall meeting on September 3rd. Your voice and your opinions are important to us. But with so many people on the call and with our time constraints, we have to limit the amount of time each person can speak. I know the time constraints are difficult. Um, I want you to remember that you can email uh, your comments, tweet, or use one of the other platforms to reach us and we'll distribute your comments to the commission. Uh, I also want everybody to be mindful of their public comment. If any comments verge on urging violence, we will be forced to cut your time short. This is not something that any of us wants to do or anything that, um, that we take lightly, but please be respectful. Um, Ingrid Williams, if you would go ahead and take the roll, please. Sure. Commissioner Bonner? Here. Here. Commissioner Giggins? Commissioner Harris? Here. Commissioner Kennedy? Uh, Commissioner Oche? Here. Ruben? Yes, here. Commissioner Thompson? Present. Commissioner Tolentino? Here. And Commissioner Vera, uh, Vice Chair Vera. Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Tolentino, would you lead us to the pledge, please? All right. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, as um, it is spelled out on the agenda, uh, if you want to provide live public comment, you must access the meeting through WebEx. Please use the web link to join the session with your first name, your last name, your email, and your computer or spark smartphone. When you register, you'll be able to select which agenda item you'd like to comment on. Your information will not be shared with other attendees. For those of you calling into the meeting, you must email your comments at cocnotify at lacounty.gov. Please include the agenda item and meeting date in your correspondence. All correspondence received shall be part of the official record. Uh, when you are going to provide public comment, um, please be sure to eliminate as much background noise as possible. Depending on the number of participants, we'll either have one or two minutes per person uh, of public comment. Um, there's always technical glitches. Um, please bear with us. We'll get better at this and um, uh, we'll try and improve each, each time we meet. Um, if a speaker wants his or her name in the um, in the minutes, you must indicate that you wish so. Um, the first agenda item is um, the approval of the minutes from August the 20th. Is there any discussion or public comments regarding the um, August 20th minutes? This is Jen. Um, any of the individuals who had registered per, for public comment on this agenda item have not signed in. So there is not currently any public comment for the administrative matters on the minutes. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, any any commissioner comments on the um, uh, on the minutes? Is there a move? Um, we approve the minutes. And is there a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposition? Uh, the motion carries. Um, at this point, I'd like to go to agenda item number two, um, the resolution um, 2A, resolution condemning violence. Um, as has been stated earlier, on September the 12th, Two deputies sitting in their patrol car in the city of Compton were shot at close range. What happened to the deputies was a callous act of violence for which the perpetrator should be held accountable. In fact, the commission abhors any type of violence perpetrated on any member of our community. This includes the, any member of the sheriff's department, law enforcement, and civilians alike. I think it's important that we take this step of condemning any such violence and that we pledge to work together to prevent and eliminate such violence. Um, any discussion among the commissioners? Excuse me, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, Rob, go ahead. You were on mute. Uh, yes, let me just say that uh, last Saturday, uh, we reached a low point in the history of Los Angeles when gunmen opened fire on two deputies at point range. The courage shown by one of the uh, deputies who was shot in the face herself of getting her partner out of the patrol vehicle and into a position of safety, act of uh, remarkable courage and is inspirational. It should be inspirational to all of us. In terms of what is faced by from time to time, um, those in law enforcement and, and deputy sheriffs in our sheriff's department. Um, you know, to say I'm outraged is an understatement. I think my meditated. This commission should uh, condemn it in no uncertain terms. I have a, I've looked at the proposed resolution 
I have a couple of suggestions with regard to it. First of all, I believe the resolution should be uh, clearly focused on the attack on the two deputies. Um, so um, um, if I could, I'm going to propose a modification of the resolution to achieve that objective. Um, certainly we don't wanna say anything or express any sentiment in this resolution that could be mis mistaken by anyone as ever justifying uh, homicidal attacks or violence on uh, deputies or other police officers. So um, just with respect to the resolution that has been circulated um, in the uh, very first whereas clause, uh, I would propose that uh, after the words on September 12th, 2020, uh, adding the words, an unidentified, unidentified woman attempted to murder and then strike the words unprovoked act of violence against so it would read an un unidentified gunman attempted to murder two los angeles county sheriff's deputies while on duty in the city of Com and then in the city of compton so slight word change to that secondly uh, i i would uh, propose deleting the second whereas clause um thirdly dropping to the um Dropping down to the what is the fourth whereas clause, I would strike uh, everything starting from the residents of Compton uh, through the words further ignite community trauma and insert the words whereas violent acts of, on sheriff's deputies and other law enforcement officers are inimical to civil society and not be tolerated. And then in the uh, therefore be it resolved clause, um, I would add the word after strongly and unequivocally, so it reads strongly and unequivocally condemn. I would strike the actions uh, after, con I would strike the words actions of the perpetrator and insert the words premeditated attack on sheriff's deputies that occurred. And then I would strike the words after September 12th, 2020, Towards any act of violence against community members and law enforcement and law enforcement. Uh, I could read, so it would read, uh, therefore, be it resolved, the Civilian Oversight Commission does hereby strongly and unequivocally condemn the premeditated attack on sheriff's deputies that occurred on September 12, 2020. So I'm proposing these amendments uh, to uh, the resolution for discussion among the uh, members of the commission and uh, um, uh, but the reason for those amendments is simply to make clear that the focus of this resolution, this resolution, we can have other resolutions on other subjects, but this resolution should be clearly focused on the, um, the despicable attacks on the two deputy sheriffs that occurred last Saturday. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Pastor Thompson, I think you had, had indicated you wanted to speak on this. Yes, good morning to each of you, um, Madam Chair, and to my fellow commissioners. Um, my, um, I just want to respond to um, Chair, I mean, to uh, Commissioner Bronner. I don't want to, I don't think we should play got you with this resolution. And I don't think that we have to walk on eggshells as it relates to this resolution. Um, in the first um, the first amendment to the first line, I, I am not um, opposed to the additional rhetoric or um, the additional verbiage that Commissioner Bonner is proposing. But we, we can mince and piece this resolution apart to try to walk on eggshells. You, you, you're not going to you know, whatever you do, you're not going to please everybody. Uh, I want to regurgitate the commentary of um, our initial speaker, Supervisor Thomas, which I thought was remarkable and very profound. Uh, we serve as a liaison for the community. We serve as a broker of civilian oversight as it for the community for the sheriff department on behalf of the community as it relates to the semantics or the um 
amendment to line number one, the unpro the I, I forget the the I forget what Commissioner mm -hmm. Bonner said initially, but I, I have no problem with that. Even with that, I think you know we can mince and piece this thing apart as it relates to the residents of Compton. I would like Commissioner Bonner to uh, if he can repeat that amendment that he is trying to make. Uh, whereas the residents of Compton, as well as other communities within the county of Los Angeles, deserve to live in a community free and violent incidents that further ignite community trauma. And while I'm talking, let me go on record and saying that we're all praying for these two deputies and we're praying that they live, we're praying that they survive, we're praying that they return to some quality um, of life that is that reflect normalcy, but um, I, you don't, you don't want to come, you don't want to start playing got you politics with this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, any other commissioners wish to comment? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if um, Commissioner Bonner wanted to respond to Commissioner Taylor first, I mean, uh, Commissioner Thompson first, or um, if I should just go ahead and offer my comment. Well, I, I, I certainly want to, I would only respond, and I, I don't think Commissioner, I don't know how to interpret exactly what Commissioner Thompson said, but I'm I'm not playing gotcha here with anybody. I'm certainly not doing that. Just uh, that's not, me, not my intent. And uh, I just, my intent is only to, uh, uh, to keep the resolution focused on condemning the attacks on the two deputies, period, full stop. And there's nothing, there's no semantics in that. That's just, how, how that's my belief that if we're going to adopt a resolution on this, that it ought to be focused on the attacks on the, the two deputies. Thank you. Th um, thank you. Um, I, I'm sure that there'll be other issues, Commissioner Bonner, um, raised by other commissioners. So perhaps if, you know, there, there may be other points to um, respond to. Um, Commissioner Ochen, did you want to um, make some comments? Yes, yes. Uh, I am in favor of adopting the resolution condemning acts of violence, whether uh, obviously we condemn the acts of violence against uh, these two deputies. And, and like uh, Commissioner Thompson said, we pray for their full and complete recovery uh, and strongly condemn the person who uh, perpetrated these acts of violence against them. Um, I am against removing the clause related to the residents of Compton. Um, I think that we should lift up uh, the fact that they too experience trauma when acts of violence occur in your city. And they too, uh, like the deputies, deserve to be able to move through their community um, in peace and in safety. Um, and I think we should cond equally condemn acts of violence, uh, whether it's by other residents of LA County or by the Sheriff's Department. Um, uh, and again, we're, we're speaking very broadly with respect to the fourth clause. So I can appreciate um, uh, the, the changes to the first, uh, whereas um, adding additional language about strongly um, and uh, without condition, I'm not sure what the second word that you added there, um, or without reservation or something like that. Um, I'm fine with that, but I, I think we should similarly say that we, um, we condemn acts of violence against residents as well. I think that we should lift up their experience experiences. Um, I, I personally don't think that this will be seen as um, uh, in any way justifying um, what happened to these two deputies. I think it's really speaking to the collective trauma and pain that's occurring in Compton that is inclusive of the acts of violence against these two deputies. So. Um, I, I would oppose striking any reference to uh, residents of Compton and what they experience as well. Um, Patty, if you want to go ahead. Uh, yes, I, I think it's important to include this community um, um, because the reverberation happened in Compton. Compton. There were things that happened before in Compton. There are things that are going to continue to happen reverberating after this incident. It's still things are very, very tender. So I think it's important for us and in our role to acknowledge the community that it happened in uh, and it didn't happen in a, a vacuum. 
Um, so I, I, I agree to include the community of Compton. I do, and I like affirming it a little uh, in the beginning. I can't remember exactly what um, Commissioner Bonner said, but it seemed a little bit stronger in that beginning. I don't see the value of talking about whether there's a suspect that's been identified or not, or whether we're saying that we we're all members of the Los Angeles community. We couldn't be on this commission if we were not residents of Los of uh, of uh, Los Angeles County. So those two, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't mind losing them. They're irrelevant. Uh, and it also just the fact that we're if we add things that are not really focused on what we're trying to say does have a tendency to dilute. Um, but I, anything that we do to make sure that we are unequivocally, unequivocally against violence in all of its forms, including when it happens to law enforcement, um, is an important statement for us to make. Um, any other commissioner comments? Um, commissioner Tolentino. <clears throat> First of all, I would, uh, I'd like to say that the, uh, I think it, the commission is uh, taking the right direction in, in condemning violence and condemning violence specifically to uh, to the ambush of these two deputies. I would not disagree with the changes that uh, Judge Bonner uh, suggested for the first whereas, uh, nor with the uh, with the last res the, the resolve portion. But otherwise, I think we need to keep everything in place. Um, and I think it's important, though, with all due respect to uh, I think some folks don't even know who we are and that they are uh, make the assumption that we're all members of the L.A. County community. Um, sometimes that's not that's not factually true. So I think it's important to let them know who we are and our role and our and uh, how we well, how we interact with I think with each of the uh, various uh, entities. So uh, with those two changes, I don't have any problems with the uh, supporting the resolution. Um, any other commissioner comments or input before we go to the public comment? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think we're all heartbroken over what what's happened, and I appreciate the thoughtful discussion today about how to um, express how we feel. Um, I think we should give a, a little more consideration to um, Commissioner Bonner's point about the last whereas clause. I think we all agree with that 100 percent, but we have to also think about it from the perspective of law enforcement and, and if we are sending to them some kind of mixed message with that. I wouldn't want to do that. So I would ask our fellow commissioners like uh, Commissioner Harris to speak to this. Um, is it sending some kind of implicit message that could add fuel to the fire or hurt feelings in terms of law enforcement? Of course, of course, we feel that everyone in Compton and everywhere should be free from acts of violence. but. If we were issuing a resolution about a victim of violence at the hands of law enforcement, I doubt we would add, whereas it said something like, all sheriff's deputies should be free from violence. So I'm concerned about, um, like I said, that kind of mixed message. And so I appreciate Commissioner Bonner's point about the last whereas, and I'm still trying to, um, to wrestle with that. Commissioner, did you want to add anything? Yeah, this is Commissioner Harris, and I apologize. I am having horrible computer problems this morning, so I am talking to you via my cell phone. I'm trying to watch you on screen, and I'm so I'm getting the basic gist of what's going on here, but I I cannot speak to everything because I don't have. Um, the ability to look at exactly what the document says right now. That said, I appreciate um, Commissioner Vera's comments. You're right, we don't want to send any mixed message. My personal feeling is that we should be condemning all forms of violence, 
whether it's in the community, whether it's uh, against law enforcement, I don't, it, it matters not to me where the violence is directed. It needs to stop. Everybody needs to take a step back and say, this is just wrong. There's too much violence in our community. And whether, whether I know there are activists who believe that the police are engaged in violent acts against the community, and if, if someone now in some twisted uh, uh, mind thinks that now we can commit acts against law enforcement, uh, that they're justified, that clearly is wrong, and we should send a very strong message to everyone. I would hope that the members of the LA County Sheriff's Department would recognize that this commission uh, is, is, is heartbroken at what's happened, but we are not blind to the community's concerns also. Violence is wrong and it needs to stop uh, regardless of who the violence is directed at or who the perpetrators of the violence are. It needs to stop. So I'm like uh, Commissioner Vera, I'm kind of wrestling with this myself. We want to send a clear message. Um, and, and I guess these are the types of things that need a little percolating. They need to really, some very clear thought needs to be given to what we want to say in our public statement. Um, so I'll, I'll end it there. All right, thank you. I'd like to go to public comment um, unless there's additional um, comments from other commissioners right now. I'm sure that there will be more um, uh, after public comment. Um, so without seeing any other commissioners wanting to um, jump in at this point, uh, Jennifer, how many people do we have for public comment on this issue? We currently have eight individuals who have pre-registered for this. All right, why don't we go ahead and um, and hear from the eight and then we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. So our first comment will come from Doreen Sanchez. Doreen, please go ahead with your comment. Doreen, you're currently muted. Please go ahead with your comment. Um, it appears that the mute button continues. Um, we'll move on to the next person, Jacqueline Venter. Please go ahead with your comment. Uh, yes, good morning, everybody. Um, I, I live in Compton, and my heart goes out to the families that were uh, um, of the victims. But as you guys know, it's been a lot of controversy here with um, deputy shootings, and not just here in Compton, but all over. My son, Tanel Billups, was a victim, and it goes back to the executioners here, which they have been named, that is um, a gang. I've been telling the same story since uh, 2011 when Tanel was shot um, five times in the back by a Los Angeles uh, uh, deputy. This guy is telling the same story that I've been telling for years. And it's a whole bunch of stuff going on in these departments that you guys are not aware of or, uh, or may be aware of and not doing anything about it. And now it's leaking out into the streets. The community is tired as well as some of these deputies that's up in there that have to deal with this and can't say anything. This deputy that came forward and told, his life is being threatened. Look what's happening in our community now. And this is a neglect from our officials, because if you guys use the same energy to stop this stuff as looking for this person that shot this, maybe these behaviors would stop because it's not just the citizens in the streets, it's the, the law enforcement also. And this is heartbreaking, you know, because we're losing loved ones. Their life matters, our loved ones' life matters, and um, I'm just praying for peace. And I'm praying also for my son to come home that fell victim to a shooting and nothing happened in this case, but you guys are helping me. My time is almost up, but you guys are helping me get to the next phase and I appreciate it. Thank you very much and everybody have a good day. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Henry P. Uh, looks like Henry may have just dropped off actually. Uh, so we'll move on to Gina Viola. Please go ahead with your comment. Hi, good morning. Um, I will be brief. I 
it was, it's very difficult. The whole situation is very difficult and as the community, we come to comment to you on violence in all forms, regardless um, on who it's perpetrated against. And to hear you taking excruciating measures to pick apart language in a resolution condemning violence um, sends a clear message to the community that we are not all equal. You don't even see us as equal, especially Commissioner Bonner, who goes to great lengths to make sure that it's stated we're not equal. Um, so that would be my concern with a resolution. Um, so that's it, thank you for your time. Thank you, and the next comment will come from Bernice Onfrey. Please go ahead with your comment, Bernice. No, oh, we didn't do the submissions. Okay, I'm not hearing anything from Bernice at this time. And next we'll move to Audrey George. Please go ahead with your comment, Audrey. And our next comment will come from Bernice Onfrey. Please go ahead with your comment, Bernice. Okay, so hearing nothing. Our next comment will come from Audrey George. Please go ahead, Audrey. Okay, still here. Nothing. Um, Ann Fisher, you are muted. Please go ahead with your comment, Ann. Um, yes. Well, first, I want to say um, that I'm just so heartbroken, uh, heartbroken by the deputies and the tragedies they've suffered and the unrest with their police and our communities. I also feel so bad for the people who are victims that are citizens of violence in any way. Um, I wrote in as well, but I, I think that anybody making obscene commentary on these calls or threats um, should be banned or discontinued. We need to keep this dialogue being very positive and being about change and awareness and um, our, our viewpoints being heard instead of having um, all this vulgarity. Um, I, I do think that the body cameras should move more quickly onto the officers. And I think that there should be a two step verification on police reports so that the citizens and the victims of crimes can know that their crime reports were um, taken accurately and that they were possibly uploaded in a portal and they can know that those um, victim statements and police reports were actually logged in so that their uh, crimes can be addressed. Um, I do believe that more protections need to be occurring for the police against these kinds of vigilantes because they are working for us and we need to take care of them and we need to protect them. But we also need to address the police's accountability because I believe a lot of this unaccountability and violence within the police forces and the attitudes and the lack of masks and the, the, just the, the attitudes need to change because you're representing the leaders, we look to you and if you're not following the rules, then people don't want to follow the rules and it's become a very dangerous situation and a very, very, very um, poor climate out there that I think if we don't address it on both sides, it's going to continue to escalate. And I want to appreciate and thank all of you for your time and hearing us yes. and hope that we can move forward to a more peaceful resolution in the future to where we can really have change for our community and our police force. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Um, and before we move on to the next speaker, do you have an announcement in Spanish? Si necesita traducción de sus comentarios en español, simplemente diga la palabra español antes de empezar sus comentarios y cuando termine sus comentarios, un traductor va a tra traducir sus comentarios. Gracias. Thank you. And our next speaker will be Joseph Maslich. Please go ahead with your comment, Joseph. Uh, hello, uh, uh, commissioners and, and other staff. Um, it's, it's as I look over the resolution, which I, I've just gotten hold of, but uh, uh, and listen to the comments, it is so difficult to deal with something like this primarily by looking at a piece of paper. And I just wish that the commission had uh, more opportunities themselves to have some discussions within themselves and really to share uh, your emotional reactions and, of course, uh, for the public to share its. And then 
you'll hear the various kinds of ways that people were reacting and be able to frame something after that. Now, perhaps that some of you had that discussion and the resolution is a product of that discussion, but we can see so many uh, other items and connections that if they were expressed in discussion, might make it uh, easier to focus uh, in writing a resolution. Um, the, uh, as I look at things, the fourth whereas, whether it mentions Compton or not, uh, maybe it could be explicit as well as all other communities within the County of Los Angeles, including people in service as county employees. Uh, I, the sheriff's deputies, along with everybody else, deserves uh, to live uh, in, uh, with the situation or uh, existence free of, free of violent incidents. Um, I don't know if that'll help you folks that are trying to formulate something now, but beyond this, I'd like to see a challenge raised or something mentioned about seeking the causes of various forms of violence and the situations that give rise to them. It's all right to condemn the result, but it really calls on a study of the various causes. And I'd like the commission, if it can't do that study itself, at least to encourage county entities and the community and other specialists to look into those. That's the way to make progress. Thank you. Thank you. And the next comment comes from TK. Please go ahead with your comment, TK. Hi, can, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so I thought that this item, agenda item, was actually going to speak on the violence by the Sheriff's Department against the community, how they opened fired on peaceful protesters with no dispersal orders. Um, no unlawful gathering orders. A seven year old was uh, sprayed with pepper balls. Multiple people were hit with rubber bullets, um, cannons, bean bags. And this went on for nights for peaceful protesters. And um, TK, I just want to interject that item 2B will address that issue. That okay, is so and right, that if you'd like to speak on the, this resolution. Okay, as far as this. Um, so I don't condone any shape or violence. Um, and this is why the community's been here to speak about police violence. Um, there's been nothing mentioned, no heartfelt, uh, condolences for Dijon Kesey's family or Andreas Gordardo's. Um, this particular situation concerns me a great deal and we have to look at police gangs and the violence within the department um, and stop blaming the community because this particular incident, I don't feel is uh, at fault of the community, but I think um, the commission needs to look within the police things themselves because I truly feel this was an inside job to uh, instigate and further perpetuate violence in South Central, um, Compton, Westmount, that entire area. Um, and I think the commission needs to do a serious look at the police gangs and stop blaming the community. Thank you. Thank you. And the last public comment will come from Audrey George. Go ahead with your comment, Audrey. Okay, you can hear me this time? Yes, we hear you. Please okay, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, um, I just wanna know where the commission's outrage is about all the corruption violent sheriff's gang, stolen lives of victims of deputy shootings, the harassments of family, the, the cooperation with ICE. Why don't you issue a resolution each time we tragically lose precious civilian lives, such as Ryan Twyman, Andres Guardardo, or Dijon Kizzi? So, um, you know, the other thing that really angers me so much is the false accusations the sheriff's allowed to be made against, you know, encouraged and, and uh, fomented against an innocent black man without any evidence at all, you know, really um, harming him, possibly ruining his life. The unwarranted and unproven racial profiling of the shooter, that was another factor that, this, that the commission should be looking at. Um, there was no evidence at all about the race of the, the shooter from the videos and the fact that um, it was that statements were made publicly by sheriff's spokes 
persons that um, indicated that it was a person of color, it's, it's outrageous. I want to know. I want to hear you express outrage about all of these things and 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 do resolutions about all of it, not just this shooting of these two sheriff deputies. Thank you. Thank you. And Leo, that does conclude the public comment of this agenda item. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for those of you who offered public comment. Um, it's important to try and keep your public comment to the specific agenda item because we have others um, that you may want to address as we move ahead. Um, what, what I'd like to suggest is um, it seems to me that there, um, the basic issue here um, with the resolution is whether it just, um, it just focuses on um the um the ambush shooting um of the of the two deputies or whether it speaks to violence generally um we've uh we've certainly heard from the community both in the um in the town hall and and at our commission meetings that um they really want um, to know that we are condemning all violence, however it occurs. And, um, and I think to include the reference to uh, violence in the community um, doesn't detract from um, the, um, the, the awful, um, tragic um, shooting of the two deputies. So I, um, well, three John period, we are certainly condemning to the, um, we are certainly condemning what, um, what occurred in the shooting of the 2 sheriff's deputies and are very grateful that, um, that they are going to recover. But I think it's important in the same vein to, um, uh, take, uh, to make a strong statement about violence in the community and, and I think. That's where um, where I differ from um, from your suggestion, Commissioner Bonner, and um, we may end up needing to take a vote on that. So, um, if you want to address that further, uh, or anybody else who wants to speak on that issue, please go ahead. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I I do think it detracts from the message that we're trying to I think we're trying to make. That condemns the uh, the attacks on the deputy sheriffs to um, uh, combine it with uh, uh, what is uh, what I would think of. And by the way, I would support a separate resolution condemning acts of violence in Compton or against citizens and residents of Compton. That's a separate issue. Maybe we should have a resolution on it. Uh, but I would like to disaggregate uh, and not complete the two uh, the two issues in in a resolution that ought to be clearly on point. Uh, look, I, look, I, I think we should get some answers to some questions. It's not a resolution. We ought to get answers to the use of lethal force uh, involving Dijon Kesey and Andres uh, Rodado. Uh, if either of those two uses of forces were unjustified, neither one of them occurred in Compton, by the way, the deputies involved should be held accountable. Um, and we need, uh, we need reforms to assure accountability. And we proposed 18 reforms. But this is this resolution should be targeted toward one thing. They shouldn't be trying to cover multiple things. We're trying to do that here, and and then we we dilute the message, uh, we make an ambiguous message, uh, and we shouldn't do that as a commission. If we're going to do resolutions, let's make them clear cut. Let's make them focus. And therefore, the only issue here is the fourth whereas clause. But I I think anyway. But uh, I I just don't think we should. Uh, we should complete the message. We should we should separate these things out. If you want a resolution on condemning violence in Compton and elsewhere, ask our executive director to prepare a resolution. Maybe circulate it more than a day before the uh, the meeting, and let's let's discuss it. But let's not let's not try to do uh, two things at once here. Thank you. Anybody else want to um, speak on this at this point? Um, Patty, 
Yeah, I just want to make a comment about this process. Uh, we've been here before trying to carve out a resolution that's meaningful, um, that it kind of uplifts from the, you know, our, our, our usual conversations and reports from ad hoc committees with very specificities. Um, we get it the day before and then we wordsmith it together. I, and I don't know why we can't. I guess we have this brown axe and we can't comment before. I mean, it is the most ridiculous thing that if you want to create something that represents all of us, and I do appreciate the efforts that the that writers do make to kind of synthesize um, um, and make a statement on behalf of all of us. But I just want to say that our process is so sorely lacking for us to really be able to come together and say, as a community of commissioners, what we want to say. Can I just um, on that point? Sorry, I think Commissioner Tolentino was Sorry. first, and then I'll, I'll get to you. I'll follow the same point uh, that Patty was saying, but the Brown Act is really important. It means that we do everything publicly, and I've been in enough commissions that I think you're right, it's difficult, but the task that we're uh, given it's not meant to be very easy. With respect to Judge Barber's comments about uh, focusing, I think this is focused already. I think adding the, the fourth whereas provides a context for uh, for a resolution rather than unfocusing that. Um, I think you need that because because it it's important um, because I think people need to understand that. The uh, it's a it's a resolution condemning violence, and I think there's a, the big elephant in the room is that um, yeah there's violence that's that's occurring uh, uh, against law enforcement, but there's a context of uh, violence in the community, and I think that's why it's important that uh, fourth uh, whereas uh, Priscilla. Uh, yes, sorry, I'm I'm taking my video off so that my bandwidth is better. Uh, just okay. so you all know. Um, uh, so I, I so two things. One, I just want to agree with Patty. I think that we should have some kind of process for uh, resolution. So if we create a standing ad hoc committee that can at least review um, a, a resolution before it's uh, agendized um, and offer some suggestions so that we're not spending a lot of time or you know to the extent that we we, we can improve or make amendments to uh the the drafts that our staff circulate it'll give us an, an earlier opportunity to comment i understand that we're you know this this is this is not a situation that we could have predicted so things are moving quickly and so i understand that but had we had an ad hoc committee we could have run it by them first before posting it on the um on the agenda and i think we can include folks like uh commissioner bonner um, who I appreciate uh, always comes through with, uh, with some amendments uh, that provoke a lot of discussion. <laughs> so, uh, you know, maybe Commissioner Bader would, would, would agree to be on that uh, committee. Um, uh, beyond that, I will say again, I think that we need to make a strong statement acknowledging um, the reality of what is happening, and that is that there is uh, a lot of pain. Uh, by uh, members of the community because of what they view as um, uh, violence against them without accountability. And we certainly know that uh, to the extent that the perpetrator um, is, is brought to justice, they will face with accountability for what happened. Um, and we want to, uh, one, uh, um, you know, acknowledge the harm um, and call for accountability uh, for everyone who experiences harm. Um, and, and that's what we do. Uh, we aren't here to take sides. Um, we are here to try to build bridges and to come up with solutions. I think that we need to acknowledge the pain um, and frustration of communities who are being afflicted by violence, all kinds of violence, um, including, and that includes members of uh, the Sheriff's Department who exist within these communities. So. Um, again, I, I would just emphasize that I would, uh, I oppose the amendment to strike um the fourth whereas clause and i oppose the amendment to strike um the and any act of violence against the community members and law enforcement the other amendments i'm fine with those two i oppose
Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. Now, might, might I suggest this because I do understand the difficulty in trying to wordsmith a resolution uh, during an actual meeting. And I do understand the efficacy of having uh, input from commissioners prior to uh, proffering a resolution to the to the commission itself. So may I suggest this as a possible direction? One that we simply adopt a statement uh, strongly condemning this horrific act against deputies um it's our simple statement right there that we strongly condemn these acts it really has no place uh in our community and that we adopt a second statement and this is the simple statement that we adopt whether we condemn violence of any kind no matter who it's perpetrated by in all of our communities of los angeles and the third su suggestion is that we do in fact uh have the chair appointed ad hoc committee for resolutions or really urgent things that need to be done where there isn't enough time for the entire commission to do it. So rather than adopt this resolution as a whole, it's a simple statement that we condemn this violence against the deputies, we condemn all violence, and we establish an ad hoc committee. Um, thank you for that. I um, um, welcome um, Commissioner Ochen's suggestion about um, ad, an ad hoc committee on this issue. Um, uh, and um, I'd like to appoint her and Commissioner Bonner and Commissioner Giggins um, and um, um, Pastor Thompson, if you'd like to be um, on this ad hoc committee, I think that's, um, we will be well served. Um, I think at this point, it is um, incumbent upon us um, to, make a statement that we condemn all violence and um and and with all due deference to commissioner bonner wanting to and and i understand that focus on the deputies i think at the very least um we make a statement here today that we condemn the violence against the deputies and at the same time, we condemn violence in the community, um, whoever perpetrates that violence. And then we should, um, uh, then I would urge the um, the ad hoc committee to meet and, and really flesh this out um, in greater detail. So um, unless there's any other um, input on this, um, I'd like to um, proceed in that way. Well, let me, yeah, this is Commissioner. Well, issue here. I think I know how that vote's going to go. Why don't we take a vote on it? And if it's uh, uh, if it's as worded, then so be it. So, but let's take a let me take a vote and and move on. Um, my suggestion. That's, um, I like that suggestion. Um, so why don't we take um, those in favor of um, Commissioner Bonner's suggestion to um, limit the fourth where as clause or to delete it, referring to the community. Um, all those in favor. Um, and then Leo, did you wanna take a roll call vote on that? Uh, yes, I think we should. Okay. Could you repeat? Could you repeat that? Yeah, the, uh, what the, are we voting okay. on? Okay, this is the S for S clause, and the uh, proposed change would be in front of you. Whereas, and then deleting the words that begin with the residents of Compton through the words uh, community trauma, and inserting in lieu of those words the words violent attacks on sheriff's deputies and other law enforcement officers cannot be uh, tolerated. Can I, can I say something? Um, yeah, yes, sir. Sir. Um, Commissioner Bonner. on whether you want to adopt the language that focuses this or you don't. Yes. Right, I, I understand, but I, Pastor Thompson wanted to speak on that. Commissioner Bonner, whereas the residents, can, can you can you repeat your amendment? Yes, I will. Okay, thank you, uh, Pastor Thompson. So the amendment would be uh, 
the the last whereas clause, and rather, it, rather than reading, it would strike the words, the residents of Compton, I'm going to read the whole thing that's stricken here. The residents of Compton, as well as other communities within the county of Los Angeles, deserve to live in a community free of violence, a bit free of violent incidents that further ignite community trauma. Striking those words, and in lieu of those words, inserting the words, violent attacks on sheriff's deputies and other law enforcement officers are inimical to a civil society and cannot be tolerated. All right, th thank you. I think that the that the difference really is um, limiting the um, the resolution to the sheriff's deputies and law enforcement or also including members of the community. Um, one more comment and then I think we should have a vote. Patty? Yeah, I just wanna to add to the entire discussion uh, and I've studied violence for decades. All violence is contextual and it behooves us when we make a statement because it's easy to just condemn violence. It's important to touch upon or point out the context. Thank you. Um, Shall we go ahead with a with a vote? Okay. Uh, go ahead, then. Okay, uh, Commissioner Bonner. I would vote in favor of my amendment. <laughs> Commissioner Giggins. Opposed. Commissioner Harris. Opposed. Commissioner Ocean. No, no. Commissioner Rubin. Rubin. Can you repeat that, Chair Rubin? Opposed. Commissioner Thompson. No, opposed. Commissioner Pino. Opposed. And Vice Chair Vera. Opposed. Thank you. So it looks like the um, the amendment to limit um, the resolution to um, solely to the deputies and law enforcement um, has been uh, defeated. But I do think it's it's essential uh, in terms of. Um, fleshing out the remaining issues and the language for the ad hoc committee to meet um, on this and and um, and draft something that um, is worthy of our consideration. So, um, if I could ask that um, that ad hoc committee to meet as soon as possible and uh, uh, fine tune the rest of it. Um, I think that that it will be um, it will be essential. Um, Commissioner Tolentino. Well, it seems to me that you lose your sense of urgency and that you need to address the issue today. Uh, setting it out again takes the whole month out. Uh, I don't think there's that much uh, controversy or conflict with the rest of the words. So it seems to me that I, I would suggest that we make a vote today. Um, any anybody else have a comment? On I, I second that. I don't know if that was a motion or an idea, but I I second that. I think we'll move ahead with a different context, but um, uh, I think we should move ahead today. All right. Shall we um, shall we take a vote on that? Sorry, just to be clear, you mean when you say that, you mean the resolution? So the resolution. Uh, uh, without, without, uh, honors amendment. Uh, so I think there, were I think there were some additional amendments that I think were controversial. Um, so if, uh, chair, it's former chair, uh, Bonner can, uh, describe those amendments so I can just mark them on my sheet, on my, uh, draft, uh, so I can know what, what we're voting on in terms of, um, the exact language. So if you can start with the first clause. Yeah, the first whereas clause, uh, and I think there was general agreement on this, but let me read the change. It's, uh, 
it, it would insert the words, uh, well, first of all, it reads, whereas on September 12, 2020, and, and then it would, AN, it would insert the words, unidentified gunman attempted to murder two Los Angeles, uh, then it would, uh, it would strike the word unprovoked act of violence against. So it would read, an unidentified gunman attempted to murder two Los Angeles deputy sheriff, deputy, uh, sheriff's deputies. And I added the word while on duty uh, uh, and struck the words took place. And then it would read in the comment. So um, I didn't hear anybody that disagreed with that, but nonetheless, I guess we could vote on it. That's change uh, one. Uh, change two would be uh, just deleting as irrelevant, really, uh, the second whereas clause just deleting it entirely. And then in the therefore be it resolved clause at the bottom, uh, I uh, proposed uh, uh, some slight word changes there. Let me just get them on the table. Uh, it currently reads, therefore be it resolved, the Civilian Oversight Commission does hereby strongly, and I added the words and unequivocally after strongly. And then it would read condemn the, and then I struck the words actions of the perpetrator and, and inserted the words premeditated okay. attack on sheriff's deputies that occurred. And uh, then it would read on September 12, 2020, as it currently does. And I struck the final words and any act of violence against community members and law enforcement. Um, uh, but anyway, that was what I had proposed uh, in addition to the, uh, the changes to the fourth whereas clause, which has already been voted on. Um, Commissioner Bonner, given that we uh, we wanted to keep references to uh, residents uh, in Compton, would you take as a friendly amendment uh, keeping and any act of violence against community members? I understand that this is a yeah. different, um, you know, wish, but so we don't have to relitigate that. Yeah, I, I think for first of all, I, I don't agree with that, but I, I think in, the, in light of the the vote we just took, I think it actually covered that issue. And if I was counting correctly, it was like seven to one uh, that uh, that would leave that those words in. So, um, for purposes of this amendment, uh, which I don't, uh, uh, I, I I think we should. Uh, uh, I I would still want to see the other slight wordsmith uh, word changes to the uh, result. The therefore be it resolved clause, but. Um, I don't think we need to vote on that again. I agree with you on that, uh, Commissioner Olson. All right. It seems to me then um, uh, we can take a vote on um, the amendments, um, both of Commissioner Bonner and the friendly amendment from Commissioner O'Chen and, um, and proceed. Um, so um, if we would uh, go ahead and take a vote, please. Chair, Chair, Madam Chair, yes. before we take, before we take a vote, just for the record, is Commissioner Bonner agreeing to include and keep the um, the the verbiage, the language, um, and uh, any act of violence against community members and law enforcement? Is that an affirmative, Commissioner Bonner? I think the vote includes that. In other words, if you approve this resolution. Uh, uh, or the motion. It's not my motion, but if you approve the motion, the that language would stay in. Uh, okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Can we um, proceed with the vote, please? Yes, um, Chair. And just to confirm, this vote is on the actual resolution since the amendments were friendly, correct? That's correct. Okay. Commissioner Bonner? Pass. Commissioner Giggins? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Ochen? Yes. Uh, yes. Commissioner Thompson? Commissioner Tolentino? Yes. And Vice Chair Vera. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, I know that this was sort of a, a, a tortured way of proceeding, and hopefully, in the future, with uh, 
ad hoc committee reviewing um, resolutions before they get presented to the entire um, commission, I, I think will be more effective. Um, I'd like to move ahead to agenda item 2B. Um, that's a discussion and update of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department enforcement activities at public protests. Um, since the onset of the civil unrest in May of 2020, many protests have taken place within the County of Los Angeles, some of which were policed by the Sheriff's Department. Uh, it's come to our attention of a recent incident. A member of the local media was arrested and it's alleged by the Sheriff's Department that she interfered with them and did not identify herself as a member of the press. After um, a presentation from our inspector general, um, who has opened an investigation into this matter, um, I'd like to um, uh, refer this to a to county council to um, report back to the commission within 30 days as to what type of enforcement law enforcement can conduct at public protests. Um, the, the, uh, the chat out there has just been um, very critical and it sounds like it is rightly so. Um, but at this point, I'd like to um, turn this over to Inspector General Huntsman. My office is investigating recent Sheriff's Department actions, which may violate the United States Constitution's guarantee of freedom of the press. In these investigations, we have requested the cooperation of the Sheriff's Department and not received it. The Sheriff's Department has provided information to the public through its PR arm and during personal appearances by the Sheriff. Unfortunately, all evidence we have currently gathered suggests that significant parts of the claims made by the Department may have been false. The information we have gathered is preliminary and not intended to substitute for a complete investigation. The first incident occurred on Friday when deputies in riot gear converged on a press conference related to the Dijon Kazee shooting. Subsequently, a member of the National Lawyers Guild was shoved while filming. The Sheriff's Department defended the action by stating that they were removing the public from the parking lot of a local business at the request of the manager. Based upon our initial review, this claim appears likely to be false. Video evidence and witness accounts indicate that the event took place in a parking lot, which belongs to the Department of Probation and is open to the public. The second incident occurred Saturday night after a press conference conducted by the sheriff regarding the condition of two deputies who were severely wounded earlier in the day. After the event, reporter Josie Huang attempted to film an arrest and was herself arrested, transported to jail and cited. After gathering the facts, the Sheriff's Department has made claims about the arrest, which appear false based upon video taken by Ms. Huang and others at the scene. Ms. Huang appears to have been wearing press identification, to have clearly identified herself as a reporter and been understood by the deputies, and most importantly, committed no crime. Penal Code Section 148, obstructing a peace officer, specifically provides that recording video of a peace officer is not obstruction. An excellent analysis of the facts can be viewed at laist.com, the website of an organization affiliated with Ms. Ms. Huang, and an extensive uh, video record can be found on Ms. Huang's Twitter feed. Yesterday, a deputy used a flashlight to prevent filming by an, of an arrest by Fox LA. The sheriff in that case made a personal apology within three hours. Actions by government which suppress reporting or intimidate reporters are strictly prohibited by the Constitution. The use of public funds to issue PR statements without regard to their truth or falsity is improper. The sheriff should immediately remove the block he has placed on OIG terminals and allow himself to be interviewed under oath regarding his public statements about Ms. Huang, as well as allegations he ordered the destruction of evidence relating to the death of Kobe Bryant. When the sheriff's department places itself above the law and disobeys the Constitution and state and local laws requiring oversight, the difficult job of law enforcement becomes harder, not easier. All of the dedicated public servants of my office support the brave women and men of the Sheriff's Department, and we ask only that the Sheriff support us by following the law. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Huntsman. I, I, I think that um, the concern is um, initially, I mean, there you've, you've covered many issues here, but the concern initially is um, what happened with the arrest of um, Josie Wong from KPCC, um, how she was treated. Is that um, a, a constitutional violation? Um, and um, where do we go from here with that? Um, it seems to me that um, the, the sheriff has dug in his heels on this issue. And um, um, I don't want us to get into a situation where um, the, the sheriff is asking us to, um, to defend what he has done here, because I, fr I frankly find um, the, uh, the um, invasion and the encroachment into um, uh, th this journalist and uh, I mean, it's it's how we get to transparency. Um, we talk about transparency. The sheriff talks about transparency. We talk about transparency um, within the community, uh, and we want the community to understand where we are going with this. And um, and and I think it's um, it's pretty outrageous um, to just have this sit out here and. Um, uh, and not have any any resolution. So I, I don't know if any commissioners want to speak on this. Um, yes, Priscilla. Uh, so I just had a question about the scope of uh, the investigation um, uh, to the extent that it can happen given the obstruction. Uh, it's funny that Ms. Wong is arrested for uh, obstruction of justice uh, or obstruction of an arrest. Meanwhile, uh, it seems that the sheriff's department uh, is the one that's engaging in the obstruction. Um, my question is about uh, whether or not other uh, areas um, will be explored with respect to the constitutional rights of uh, folks who are protesting, right? The right to assemble, the right to um, ask for redress of grievances, um, uh, First Amendment rights with respect to uh, the right of self-expression. Um, uh, throughout the protests in from May to date, um, there have been a number of video, uh, uh, the videos that have circulated online of <clears throat> heavy, heavy handed tactics of the Sheriff's Department. Um, what happened to Ms. Wong is uh, not exceptional. Um, what the difference is that she has a bigger platform and she actually uh, had the presence of mind to record her arrest. Um, but we've heard time and time again, especially as the protests in LA County were ramping up um, during our meetings, people talking about abuses of the sheriff's department with regard to um, a lack of notice that there's an unlawful assembly, a lack of dispersal orders, people being uh, arrested, um, tackled to the ground, handcuffs um, being tightened uh, to the point of uh, loss of feeling uh, or nerve damage, people being um, warehoused on buses that are unsafe and the, the sheriff's deputies, the allegation that the sheriff's deputies knowingly did this. Um, and I could go on, uh, but I'm wondering, um, uh, Inspector uh, uh, General Huntsman, whether you will be uh, examining those kinds of allegations and complaints from members of the public who participated in protests who believe that they were um, abused uh, by the sheriff's department in, in ways that were similar to Ms. Uh, to Ms. Wong. I share your sense of irony that we are being obstructed in looking at whether or not they properly conducted an obstruction arrest. Um, the, in these two particular cases, we were very fortunate that there was a large amount of video. I hope that in the future with body cameras, there'll be a large amount of video. I'm not optimistic that the sheriff's department will allow us to look at it under the current state of um, the decisions made by, by the sheriff. I don't believe uh, we are going to be able to investigate effectively all those instances if we don't receive uh, compliance with the law from the sheriff's department. So ultimately, uh, in this case, we were able to gather some preliminary information because of the availability of witnesses and um, video from a source other than the sheriff's department. But in general, that's going to be a problem. 
Um, I would recommend uh, what the chair has recommended, which is that you ask for a report back from county council uh, setting forth uh, the, the standards and begin a process of possible litigation. Uh, I think we're going to find litigation against the county if we don't step in because uh, as we're, just, we're discussing constitutional violations here. And so I think it's appropriate for county council to analyze and assess whether or not the county can take action uh, to correct the behavior of one of the public officials of the county. And that's already been raised by the board regarding uh, shooting. I think it's appropriate in this context, but I think county council has the ability to evaluate what action can be taken. Um, and I think our ability to investigate as long as the sheriff's department refuses to follow that law is going to be severely limited. Well, well, can I just add one thing? There is a, a lot of video footage um, floating around online of, about the sheriff's department's conduct um, during these protests. So I would uh, encourage uh, you, uh, your office, or county council um, to to identify those uh, videos, particularly on Twitter and other social media platforms. It's available. It's 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 clear. Um, we just don't have a single person uh, uh, whose arrest we can focus on, but uh, I, I would encourage you to look at that footage as well, because I think it also does provide context for a pattern uh, in practice um, that the sheriff is engaging in, in terms of these uh, frivolous arrests, essentially to intimidate people from uh, protesting or calling attention to the sheriff's department's uh, abuses. So. It's it's available. To, so it's so Josie Wong's arrest is not unique in that there's video footage in many other instances. There's there's contemporaneous video as well. Um, I think what's what's essential is um, getting information from county council. What is appropriate behavior that the sheriff's department may conduct during the course of demonstrations? Um, and um, and other public protests and and what is not. Um, I mean, we can talk about um, the uh, the the reporter because um, there's a lot of footage and First Amendment issues regarding um, a journalist. But um, but I am also concerned about um, members of the public who chose to protest. What are those rights? What are their rights vis-a-vis -vis the sheriff's department? So, um, uh, I am asking county council to um, um, put together a report and report back to us at our next meeting in October. <coughs> yes, Patty. That or we can certainly do that. Thank you, um, Patty. Uh, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly support that. Um, and here we are in another situation where. Um, the uh, inspector general does not get the cooperation that he needs to do a comprehensive investigation. Um, and then what do we do? What, you know, what do we do? We just, um, went through a whole, what we spent an hour trying to make a statement, uh, in a resolution. Today, the LA Times in their editorial pointed out that one of our roles that we should not shirk, and I believe that uh, Supervisor Ridley Thomas addressed it too, that we cannot shirk pointing out these deficiencies, these transgressions, or when the Sheriff's Department misses the mark. You know, that is a role that we have. So I hope you won't giggle when I recommend that perhaps the first Next job of the ad hoc resolution committee is to come up with a resolution that condemns these constitutional violations. Um, they are acts of violence uh, involved. Um, protest is protected. Journalistic activities are protected. Um, and in this whole call, these again, and violence is contextual. So um, anyway, I just, would put out there, I'm wondering if now we could at least make a statement from this body, uh, a strong statement and in line with what the LA Times suggests that we do, which is to point out these behaviors. Um, I, I think that's that's a great idea. And um, 
And in fact, um, as the um, Times editorial pointed out, um, we are needed more than ever for this um, for this purpose. And um, I urge the ad hoc committee to uh, to meet and to and to do that. Um, before we go to public comment on this issue, any other commissioners have any um, any comments or input? Okay, um, um, Jennifer, how many um, members have signed up for public comment on this issue? We have nine members who have signed up. Um, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, take that, please? Okay, thank you. And our first comment will come from John Hicks. Please go ahead with your comment, John. John, could you please speak closer to your microphone? Is that better? Yes. Um, Please go ahead. Yes. So I just I was struck by the fact that you know the journalist engaged in first amendment activity, and then the the misinformation coming out of the sheriff's department sort of proves the need why we need journalists to tell the truth. I mean, it's just, it's just so obvious. And you know, I wonder is there anybody in the sheriff's department that gets told the truth, and then the lies come out to the rest of us? I just don't understand how this works. I mean, let's let's get to the people who actually know it and get the information from them. We need to somehow cut out the system where there's a intermediary who's coming up with a fake story to tell. And, you know, I mean, I'd be interested in the commission's feelings. Like, do, does the sheriff's department lie to you? Uh, or do you feel like, um, you know, the misrepresentations of the Josie Wong arrest, uh, you know, got to you as well. I mean, I'm just a nobody. I'm a I'm a I'm an average citizen, but you guys are empowered to represent our interests of the public and that must make you feel really, you know, alarmed and mad. And so I guess it comes down to we need to reassess the role of these public information officers. Um I would support defunding them and um you know, obviously in my role as a private citizen would support uh you know, lawsuits from the ACLU and whatever that um you know would maybe aim at some sort of consent decree about how the sheriff's department is going to um, provide truthful and accurate information to the public. And that's the end. Thank you. And before we move to the next speaker, we do have an announcement in Spanish. Buenos días. Si necesita un tra una traducción en español a sus comentarios, simplemente diga la palabra en español y cuando termine sus comentarios, alguien traducida sus comentarios al inglés. Gracias. Thank you. And our next public comment will come from Vic Norman. Please go ahead with your comment, Vic. Okay, we'll come back to you, Vic. Um, next, Michelle Infante, please go ahead with your comment. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, you know, you need to write what it is. It's scandalous what the department is doing. They're not transparent. They're not accountable. You've known this for years. It's been going on for centuries. These families come to you and they cry with pain and anguish. And then you have people jump on here or commissioners suggesting that these families um, shouldn't be using the language they're using. It's frustrating to sit back and watch after the last six years a department when it changes from one administration to another to continuously be able to harass families and that retaliation and intimidation and deputy, ga deputy gangs, you can't even use the right language for what's going on. It's painful to sit back and, and watch this and see that, I don't know, politically that your hands are tied. It's frustrating. These families are in pain pain and all the department can do is come out and lie uh, to the OIG, to the community, to you as a commission and your hands are tied and there's nothing you can do. You need to make your message scandalous and it needs to be factual. And there's no reason why you can't apply everything that you know from over the last three years to whatever it is that you're trying to make right now. 
I would implore you to please make your ad hoc committee and your report as scandalous as possible because the facts are out there. And I think the people you, you know by watching these people and listening to them that they're tired of it. And they're looking at you to make that representation for them. And so I implore you to please use the language and all the facts that you have to represent what is really going on in the community. Thank you. And the next public comment will go back to Vic Norman. You are unmuted. Please go ahead with your comment, Vic. Still waiting for some, uh, for some phone call that's supposed to be there. But I Vic, don't know if I can be heard at all. Vic, can you, you are being heard right now. Yes, we hear you. Please go ahead. Not. And okay. okay, maybe he's not able to hear us. Um, next, we'll go ahead with Gina Viola. Please go ahead with your comment. Thank you. Um, it's just so troubling how long we've actually seen the sheriff's department do what it needs to to quell protest and assembly and one place that you can look to for a historical example is at the Jackie Lacey protests that have been happening once a week for almost three years it will be three years that we have been there uh, weekly this October and the police have done the sheriffs I'm sorry have done all that they can to prevent us from assembling peacefully there. And now that the protests have grown in such a size, the outrageous setup of the sheriffs is egregious. They are there as early as maybe one o'clock when we don't start until three, assembling uh, blocks all the way around. Um, it is just an outrageous, uh, show of the funding and the waste of funding and the waste of monies for a peaceful assembly that happens week after week. And I am grateful that there are, is footage online and I would hope that something actually does get done. But the Sheriff's Department is in the habit of actively stonewalling any attempts to look into its inner workings. I mean, a former sheriff, uh, Lee Baca, is currently in prison for his role in blocking the FBI investigation into him. And this current sheriff, Villanueva, has defied subpoenas from this Civilian Oversight Commission to testify about the jail conditions during COVID. Um, so I'm really troubled about how we move forward in any type of accountability and transparency and how we are going to hold uh, anyone responsible for anything that happens that the sheriffs do. Thank you. Thank you. And our next comment will come from Berenice Onafri. Please go ahead with your comment. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead. Uh, I am a county resident for over 50 years. I know it's not your, your, your decision, but I have a concern for the demographics of this commission. So therefore, I urge you to be objective in your assessment and your investigation and decisions. I would also like to hear that you're investigating the, the, uh, the violence against Latinos. I have not heard any of that, but it does occur a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next comment will come from Joseph Maslich. Please go ahead with your comment, Joseph. Uh, I'll pass uh, on this one. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next comment will come from TK. Um, let me find you really quick. Okay, TK, you are unmuted. Please go ahead with your comment. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Please go ahead. I'd like to discuss the ongoing harassment by the Sheriff's Department, the families, particularly the Anthony Vargas family, the Ryan Twyman family, the Dijon Kizzy family, Andreas Gordardo family. Actually, the night Dijon was murdered, they left his body in the street for 18 hours, wouldn't let the family go cover it. And they were harassing, intimidating all the people that were there in justice for Dijon. On September 5th, there was no unlawful dispersal orders and they actually shot at family members. Um, 
uh, a family member was hit by rubber bullets. I myself was uh, got gassed with pepper spray and I have a health condition was no order to disperse. A seven year old also got gassed. Um, also, I wanted to mention um, since my my two items got um, crossed and I was interrupted um, as far as the two deputies that um, were impacted. Uh, it's just strange how that video came out immediately the day that incident happened, but families that are impacted by police violence wait months and years for video and autopsies and reports. Um, also, the ACLU has class action lawsuits against the violence um, of these uh, of the sheriff's department against peaceful protesters. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the trauma and pain of these families and the continued harassment of them by the sheriff's department is un is unacceptable. Um, we need to definitely um, somehow figure a way to curb this violence of the sheriff's department and look into the police gangs um, that are running the neighborhoods or trying to run the neighborhoods and inciting violence every day in the community. I think the violence is on part of the sheriff's department and not the community. And we need to look at that a lot more closely. Thank you. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Adriana Quinones. Please go ahead with your comment, Adriana. Adriana Quinones, you are unmuted. Please go ahead. Well, hello, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I have a lot of concerns. Uh, the major concern that I have in many, many members of my community of Hacienda Heights is that there seems to be a political battle between Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors and uh, uh, the Chair of Villanueva. That is not helping our communities at all. So that needs to stop. They need to start talking to one another, develop a partnership. What I would suggest is that uh, an advisory board uh, be done in every community composed of local residents, local uh, law enforcement, and local elected officials. That is working in our community. We work very closely with law enforcement. Uh, they are very transparent. We have monthly meetings as to what is going on in our community. They listen to our concerns. So I would suggest that we go back to basics and talk about that. Um, one thing that is really bothering me is that the uh, oversight committee, uh, most of the members are very negative towards the law enforcement. That is absolutely not acceptable as they are there to represent all members of our communities. Um, I lived in Royal Heights and I did see police brutality for many, many years. There's ways of addressing that, but the community needs to step up. Uh, we need to really, really work on local um, uh, resolution rather than having political appointees or uh, having all this uh, um, lack of partnership between all of the agencies. Um, I would also like to see the Community Oversight Committee uh, do these meetings during the evening when people are actually home. Uh, during the morning is not a good time for the rest of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next we will have Vic Norman. Please go ahead and comment, Vic. Okay. I hope you can hear me now. We hear you. Can you? Hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, fine. Yeah, listen, I'm having, I've had audio problems uh, this morning on, uh, with, the, with WebEx. So um, my, my question, I think, uh, first of all, thank you for letting me speak and, um, and, and thank you for your service. I'm sure you all seem to be very well-meaning, bright people. Um, this was the first meeting I ever uh, listened to or attended of your commission. So um, yesterday, after I registered, I took a look at the documents that were um, attached to to the meeting, and I was I found I I found myself being quite disturbed. Um, the letter in question was the one that I believe uh, Commissioner uh, no uh, the uh, OIG uh, Huntsman sent to uh, Sheriff Villanueva. 
uh, last uh, May, I believe, in 2019, uh, about his lack of ap- his lack of attendance uh, at these meetings, and um, I thought that was odd because this is supposed to be a sheriff's oversight commission. Uh, I'm from New York, and uh, we have a very, very powerful civilian oversight commission of the NYPD, and. Um, I know this from experience because I have some experience with NYPD as a civilian observer for for many years and also uh, having interned at uh, one police plaza during my uh, attending law school. And so I thought that you, uh, the commission, might actually have some powers of enforcement over requiring the attendance of Villanueva, and I believe you said you would subpoena him. I don't know what happened after that, but I, I've i listened to you for a while Thank now. Thank you. Thank you, Vic, and that took your time, okay? And the next comment will come from James Grant. Please go ahead with your comment, James. Yeah. Good morning, commissioners um, and Mr. Huntsman. I do not know if you and I met when I was on staff uh, at the Inspector General for the Los Angeles Police Commission. In the 1970s, late 1970s, I worked for the Santa Monica Evening Outlook. And of course, as I just mentioned, uh, later years, I worked for the Inspector General and the LAPD. On both occasions, there was a media guide for dealing with the press, there were also policies and procedures in place and officers were trained as part of academy training on dealing with the press. Uh, With what I'm seeing now with the attack on the KPCC reporter, uh, Mr. Huntsman, I'm asking, um, do those policies still exist? And what are they at present? That's it. I'll conclude my remarks, unless you have questions for me. Thank you very much, sir. And the next comment will come from Carleen Goyer. Please go ahead with your comment, Carleen. Hi, can you hear me? My name is Carleen Goller. Yes. yes, please go ahead. My name is Carleen Goller. I'm from my own law firm, the law office of Carleen Goller, and I'm a lawyer for Southern California Public Radio, KPCC, LAS, the employer and news organization of Josie Wang. I can answer the last commenter's question uh, by telling them that, in fact, the LASD handbook manual of policy and procedure, section 3 08 0.16, photography, audio, and videotaping by the public and press does exist. What doesn't exist, apparently, is good training for the deputies who are in a very tense situation that's admitted. But in this situation where Josie Wang was there performing a, an essential service, a public service, as a journalist trying to record the protests that were occurring after the press conference she attended for the sheriff, where they chose to have that press conference on the grounds of St. Francis Medical Center. Um, She was brutally arrested for doing exactly what this manual section says that she should be able to do. And if they have problems with it, they need to call a supervisor. That's what their policy manual says. I'm really grateful to the inspector general for being so on top of all of this. I'm grateful for the supervisor for referring it to him for investigation. I'm grateful that the inspector general is putting this together with all the other assaults on the journalists trying to inform the public about these protests um, as to how the public is being served by a very important law enforcement agency by deputies that carry guns. What happened to Ms. Wang is uh, an example of how journalists are being treated day by day this summer because these protests have been going on day by day. And in any case, I'm sure that my time is up here. I just want to say that I appreciate the fact that we are in an investigatory stage. I appreciate the fact that the inspector general is looking into it. I appreciate uh, that Chairwoman 
uh, Ruben has referred this to County Council. I am concerned that County Council represents the Sheriff's Department too. Thank you. And the last public comment will come from Audrey George. Please go ahead with your comment, Audrey. Um, yes, um, this is not the first time I have brought up the Jackie Lacey protests. I've been going for the close to three years, almost every single week um, that they've been protesting. I, I feel sometimes like you don't understand the what we're describing as sheriff harassment. You know, in a in a protest where we started out being able to protest, um, you know, maybe um, 20 yards away from the, you know, from the front door of the Hall of Injustice um, on the courtyard. And now having been over years pushed out to the street, not even the stairs, but the street and um, and to see the the sheriffs blocking off two two blocks either direction and and so heavily armed and with all of their their vehicles ready to take prisoners and their riot gear and i think the only way that you can understand what we go through the and what how this traumatizes the families that come every week to speak of their pain um is to go you know i i don't think i've ever seen any of you commissioners at one of these protests, you need to go and see for yourself the militarization of this response to legal protest. And there's never once been violence there. There's never once been a violent incident, not one protester um, in this Black Lives Matter led event every week has committed violence against law enforcement or any other person. You need to come. I challenge you to come and see for yourself and then tell me that you don't care. Thank you. And we do have one last pub public comment coming from Publius. Publius, please go ahead with your comment. Okay, thank you. I strongly recommend the immediate. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Please go ahead. I strongly recommend the immediate removal of Sheriff Alex Villanueva as a danger to the community. I believe it's your responsibility to take care of this. You're the oversight. You need to do more. You're not doing enough. By Sheriff Villanueva approving the illegal arrest of a journalist and can, his continued support of known sheriff's gang members working as criminals under the color of authority, Mr. Villanueva passes, excuse me, Mr. Villanueva poses a grave threat to the safety and well being of citizens throughout Los Angeles County. We demand the, remo the removal of Alex Villanueva and an investigation of the, by the FBI of the arrest and persecution of journalist Jose Huang from the award-winning public radio station KPCC and the ongoing FBI investigation of corruption by Deputy Alex Villanueva and the corruption of known deputy gangs in LA County as being investigated by the FBI currently. I also believe if this oversight committee doesn't remove Alex Villanueva as a sheriff by next month's meeting, the FBI should investigate possible corruption within this civilian oversight group. Also, I do believe what someone else asked, uh, requested that these meetings should be in the evenings or at least alternate from a daytime meeting once a month to being on a weekend another time or alternating to, to the evening so working people can attend as well. And why isn't the sheriff here? This is really a problem. So I challenge you to rise to your responsibility of your position on this committee and take every action possible to remove Alex Villanueva as sheriff before next month. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Chair Rubin, this does conclude our public comment on this item. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, I, I um, all appreciate all of the public comment, um, but in addition, I want to recognize Carleen Goller for um, for her insight um, and certainly her reference to the sheriff's policy on um, dealing with journalists, which of course um, we haven't yet been informed of. But um, separate and apart from that, 
Um, I think that um, I had requested county council to come back next month with um, a, um, a memorandum, an assessment of um, what um, what is appropriate for the um, for law enforcement and for the sheriffs to conduct um, during public demonstrations. Um, I had neglected um, in order for um, um, for county council to do this, we have to take a vote authorizing that. So um, um, if we can go ahead, Ingrid, and take a vote from all of the commissioners um, requesting that county council come back within 30 days <clears throat> with a discussion of what is um, what is constitutional that the sheriff can do at public demonstrations. Commissioner Bonner. Commissioner Bonner. I vote yay. Commissioner Giggins. Commissioner Harris. Oh, did you hear me? Did, did you hear my yes? I'm sorry, uh, Jennifer. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Ochen? Yes. Commissioner Rubin? Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner Tolentino? And, uh, Vice Chair Vera. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I think that um, un unless Commissioner Vera has um, an additional question, I think it's appropriate that we take a 15 minute recess. Um, did you want to say something before then? Madam Chair, very quickly, uh, it's pertinent to the, the topic we just uh, voted on. Just wanted to follow up with Ms. Guller's comment as well about the possible conflict of county council. Uh, I think they give us excellent advice, but I do agree with her that there are, there are occasions where we may be um, freer of conflicts if we were to have a separate council um, to advise us on certain issues. Uh, it's come up in some of the discussions of our ad hoc committee, our subpoena ad hoc committee. So I'm not sure what the proper procedure to explore that, whether to ask our executive director um, to see uh, how that would come about, whether we would need separate budgetary authority for something like that, whether he feels like he already has that. Um, but I wanted to raise the issue because I think it is coming up again and again. Um, I think that's a great suggestion. Um, I know that this, um, the question of this has been raised um, on other matters, and I believe that um, during the the remainder of our meeting today, we could inquire of um, Ms. Um, Zuderweg um, what county council's position is on that and how we can explore that. So um, with that, I think we'll defer that and um, take a 15 minute break. Thank you.
Um, <clears throat> Jennifer, it's 11.15. I'd like to get started. Great. Awesome. The commissioners could turn on your camera so we could just make sure that you're available. Right. <clears throat> Hey Jennifer, this is Commissioner Harris. I am here. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Commissioner Harris. Mm -hmm. Great. And do we have um, Commissioner Tolentino? We see you now. Yes, looking good. Yes. <clears throat> That's and great. Commissioner Go Bonner ahead. and Ochin, if you are in front of your computers, can you turn your camera on for? I'm here. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we're just waiting for Commissioner Bonner, um, but you can go ahead and take the floor, Lael. Thank you. Um, thanks everybody for coming back on time. Um, we, um, there is a resolution, resolution um, in support of an independent investigation of deaths that occur as a result of use of force by the Sheriff's Department, that is agenda item 2C. Um, rather than um, discussing the resolution um, that is attached to the agenda, I think our newly created ad hoc committee um, should take a look at this issue um, and um, report back to us um, soon. Um, certainly by the next meeting, um, this was one of the issues that was raised uh, across the board at our um, town hall meeting on September the 3rd, that um, it was, you know, how can the sheriff investigate himself? Um, there have been eight officer involved deaths um, or uh, officer involved shootings resulting in a death since, um, since May. And uh, the question is, um, should they be investigated by an outside agency? Um, certainly the ad hoc committee on use of force and Commissioner Bonner had um, made several suggestions during um, their review and recommendation, but this is a specific resolution that if um, the ad hoc committee um, agrees and it comes back to the, to the commission, would actually go to the Board of Supervisors, um, a resolution to them to um, uh, affirmatively seek um, outside investigation. So um, uh, unless somebody wants to discuss this issue now, um, I, I think that um, we should refer it to the ad hoc. Um, Priscilla, you indicate you wanna speak on this issue? Uh, yes, so um, now that I'm a, a new member of this ad hoc committee, um, this is a rare occasion where we can uh, see if there are any questions or um, uh, things that the commission would like us specifically to, to consider as we, um, you know, do the revisions, if any, to the resolution. Um, so I'd be interested to know if there are any specific areas that we should um, consider uh, without, you know, specifically discussing the resolution, but if there are particular questions that folks have or, um, yeah, uh, issues that they want us to consider as we're revising. I think, I think that's a great suggestion. Um, Ernan, did you have something you wanted to add in here? Um, just very quickly, thank you. Uh, and I apologize if I missed it, but just to get a little bit more context about this, who drafted it? Was it already worked on by several commissioners? Um, I like what I'm seeing in, in this resolution and I wish we could have moved quickly on this to, to get it to the supervisors, but I but I respect the, the need for um, for more process. But what was the background on how this came about? Not, not in terms of the town hall, but in terms of how this was written or, or put together. Um, well, I think it's um, it's very clear it was drafted by um, uh, Mr. Williams and his staff um, as a result, uh, and as I said earlier, as a result of um, some discussion at the 
September 3rd town hall meeting and in light of the recommendations that had been made by Commissioner Bonner in his um, in his use of force recommendations. Um, I did take a look at it um, and I, um, I I know it's a it's a difficult issue for everybody. Um, I know that um, without giving any secrets away, the sheriff is will not be happy with this. Um, but I think it's um, it's incumbent upon us as a commission in terms of doing our job that um, we um, we take a strong stand. So that that it, I don't know if that answers your question. Can I suggest if if there's general agreement on it, since it reflects recommendations that we have already approved, that that perhaps we can prove it today. I mean, if there's one or two very strong objections that want to wordsmith it, then I don't suggest that we do that now. But perhaps there's already consensus on this, Madam Chair. I I don't see. I, I think that's that's a great suggestion. I just also wanted to obviate the need to spend a great length of time doing the wordsmithing, but we can talk about it in general terms. And I think that's a that's a great suggestion. Yeah, I'm I'm ready to move it unless someone strongly wants to take this back to a committee for further wordsmithing. I'm ready to to uh, to move this as uh, move its approval. If I could be heard, then. Rob, go ahead. In any event, if if anyone hears me. I'll go ahead. Commissioner, uh, do I, you I hear you? Think, please. Uh, one, two, we should just go on right now. There's all right. Uh, let me try again. Uh, I'm just responding to Commissioner Vera. I, I, I believe that we are ready to uh, go forward on uh, recommendations one and two. Uh, on the third recommendation, I'd like to defer on that because it's limited to qualified immunity. And the, uh, the the Bill of Rights, uh, uh, Police Officers Bill of Rights needs to be amended in a number of ways. I think maybe the Use of Force Committee should look at number three. And I say that because uh, the real issue with uh, pull bar is, uh, and related statutes, is how can it be easier to hold deputies accountable through the discipline process uh, than it currently is. Qualified immunity only applies, as you know, to civil rights actions under 1983 and federal court. And it's not that uh, we've recommended that we do away with qualified immunity, but that's a very, very small thing. So on the third issue, I'd like to refer that to the uh, use of force ad hoc committee. And on the first two issues, uh, at least I would be prepared to uh, 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 vote on those uh, today. And I support them. Okay, that's that's great. Um, it, unless there's um, input from from anybody else, um, I would certainly. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is Commissioner Harris. Yes. I would like to uh, agree with uh, Commissioner Bonner on that one. I think we could act on one and two today. One thing that concerns me about this resolution, as in all resolutions, and I know this is how things are done in the political world, but it's putting a lot of disparate type topics into one resolution. So you sometimes may feel strongly one way or another on one item and, all, and, on, and on another item be totally opposed to it, but yet you're put into a position where it's a vote up or down on the entire package. I would hope we would do resolutions on a single topic because Again, the three things that are in this resolution, having the, the family assistance plan in this resolution, I don't see where that has a lot to do with the uh, investigation of uses of force um, and also the issue of particularly uh, Peace Officer Bill of Rights and qualified immunity. I mean, those things are not, they're not the same thing. So uh, I am fine with one and two. Although I have to say, I, I, I am very disappointed in the first one, not from our commission's point of view, but I think it started out as a much stronger piece of uh, legislation than what it ended up as. 
and uh, it, it might be a good first start, but it certainly is not where we need to be by a long shot. Um, but I agree with, with uh, Commissioner Bonner, you know, I think we should uh, take three off and that needs some further work. And then we could, again, uh, attempt another resolution uh, later. I want the uh, use of force committee has a look at it. Uh, That's the end of my comment. Okay. Patty. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you. I, um, I'm concerned about the way two is worded that it's LASD coordinates for regular meetings of the FAP collaborative. Uh, and it's very confusing about who was really in charge of that because it was the, uh, I know that the IG was involved. Um, all the def, you know, all the departments are involved. So I'm, I'm concerned about the direction if, and, and also again, um, how does this. It's connected, but it's not as connected in terms of calling for investigations. So I am concerned about the mixing of um, resolution metaphors, so to speak, as, as expressed by uh, um, Commissioner Harris. Um, Commissioner, um, so you know, I'm, I'm prepared to move the, uh, the, the resolution, I, I do hear what folks are saying in terms of the number of topics that are being covered. Um, but even if they were separate resolutions, I'd be prepared to support a resolution calling for the funding and um, uh, actualization of the family assistance program, as well as uh, uh, independent investigations of um, killings by sheriff's deputies. Um, so uh, I would also add, I think we should we should have investigations to uh, of, of folks who are who die in custody. Um, there are often uh, circumstances that are questionable, um, and and the same challenges, or or even more so, are present because we don't have um, a, a lot of information about what happens on the inside. Although there are, there is some recordings, um, so I would I would add in 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 custody deaths. Um, the second issue I have is related to uh, the point that, that Commissioner Giggins made, which was when we passed the uh, Family Assistance Program um, uh, uh, resolution, one of the things that we were very concerned about was that this was not housed within LASD uh, because of concerns about uh, credibility um, and, and just taking into account uh, how families would feel having to go to the very agency that that took the life of their loved one for support. Um, so I think the wording that suggests that LAS coordinate this is is wrong. Um, that it sh we should have a, a separate county entity. And I think we had identified the Department of uh, Mental Health um, or others uh, to, to lead um, this uh, uh, interdisciplinary body, uh, the Family Assistance um, Working Group. Uh, but that it would not be led by LASD. So I think the idea of LASD coordinating should be stricken from that situation. Uh, it looks to me, Madam Chair, that there are enough comments here that we need to refer this to. Yeah, I, I withdraw my motion. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's probably a good idea. Um, but I do think that um, we probably need to have public comment on this issue before we um, we send it out. Um, but I would hope that we move expeditiously because um, it's it's important that that um, we take a stand as strongly as possible and as Commissioner Vera said, as soon as possible. Um, Patty, did you yeah, have something? I just wanted to add that I think it's um, with the support of this body. I think that the resolution ad hoc should come up with a, a, a protocol so that we don't get bogged down on, you know, things being too confusing or mixed up. So I'm hoping that the, the, that this uh, body would support us doing that. Also, that kind of work of what is our protocol for for um, our form? What is the form for our resolution? I think that's a great idea. Yeah. You're muted, Leo. Sorry. Um, we need public comment on this issue, and then um, we will um, refer it to um, 
the ad hoc committee, and I would urge members of the public, this is going to be your opportunity to talk on this, this issue, um, knowing that it's going to be reviewed by an ad hoc committee, um, because they will welcome your input as well. So, um, Jennifer, how much, how many um, requests to speak are there? We currently have eight individuals signed up. Okay, why don't we go ahead and do that, and then we will um, move this to um, our ad hoc committee. Thank you. And before we take the first speaker, an announcement in Spanish. Si me gustaría traducción en español para sus comentarios, por favor, diga la español y alguien va a traducir sus comentarios cuando termine. Gracias. Thank you. And our first comment will come from Carl. Montes, please go ahead with your comment, Carlos. Uh, yes, uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, my name is Carlos Montes. I graduated from uh, Garfield High School. I lived for many years in East LA. Uh, I was a college panel activist for justice. Uh, I moved out of East LA, Low Heights, because I got tired of the uh, harassing and the occupying force of the East LA sheriffs. I've been growing up in East LA. I was harassed. I was beaten. I was arrested many times. I've been in East LA uh, Sheriff's Jail. I've been in the county jail, beat up in there. Uh, and I'm still uh, looking for justice. So I totally agree with your your motion or your resolution. I read it last night, and I believe it says you want to uh, have the AG, Attorney General, of State of California investigate the sheriffs i totally agree with that because i'm totally disappointed with jackie lacy she needs to be voted out uh because she has done nothing to investigate the killings by the sheriffs and the brutality that has been going on for 40 50 60 years i remember in 1967 protesting at the east LA sheriff station on the killing of a young man and it continues today whether it's anthony vargas paul rea you know, and Edwin Rodriguez, everybody forgets about Edwin Rodriguez, a young man sitting in his car after work, not even doing anything, being pulled out and shot in the back of the head, shot in the back by the sheriff, who did the gang. There was a gang there, and Sheriff Villanueva is covering up for the gangs, supporting the gangs, supporting the brutality, the murder. Jackie Lacey had done nothing about it. And you all don't have a lot of power to do it. You know, I'm glad that you're you're uh, voicing your concerns. You have in public comment, et cetera. But we need the attorney general to investigate the sheriffs. And in my view, they need to be prosecuted, fired, thrown out. They are the ones that should be in jail, not our people. Uh, you know, when Kamala Harris was the AG, we wrote letters to her. We called her and she did investigate some departments yeah. in California. Thank you, and that does conclude you. your time. Uh, the next speaker will be Michelle Infante. Please go ahead with your comment, Michelle. Oh, shoot, I was gonna yield my time. But, um, all right, um, with regards to use of force, it's scary to think that the detectives are allowed to, um, in, uh, it, it's scary that they're allowed to have hours and hours to manipulate crime scenes. Um, I think that if you if you ever had the opportunity to read depositions of some of these settlements, you will find stories in there where officers start talking about and 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 patho pathologists start talking about how deputies can wrap a blanket around someone and beat someone up and then and injure them internally, and then the sheriff's department is allowed to say or set up someone as a suicide and then the county coroner goes in and only does an external um, exam without doing an internal exam um, with the sheriff's department here's what i would say alex villanueva you need to step up to the plate and show up to all of the civilian oversight commission meetings i'm not asking you uh, to do anything monetarily i'm asking you to do it ethically with some morals and accountability and transparency that's something that you can give the community and the commission for free because your uniform is not only looking green and tan from the front side, but your backside is starting to look yellow when you don't show up.
Thank you. And the next comment will come from Publius. Publius, please go ahead your comment. Yeah, thank you so much. I agree with what Mr. Huntsman said previously about the rule of law. That's crucial. And we are not seeing that happen. I encourage all of you to do everything you can to protect the public. I believe that's what you're here for. And I reiterate that I believe the sheriff's deputies, as tracked in the LA Times, numerous articles are corrupt. These are common criminals posing as officers. They are people who should be fired, prosecuted, and put in prison or jail for their criminal activities. It's completely outrageous that these criminals are posing as officers. These gangs are currently being investigated by the FBI. This is well known. And I want you to participate in any way you can to help remove officers who have been killing, shooting people in the back. This is we were raised with the idea that that's cowardly to shoot someone in the back. These people should never be doing this. So these are criminal gangs known to be wearing uniforms, posing as officers. And Alex Nueva, Avia Nueva is in charge of them and he's he's covering it up and supporting them. So he is the first person that needs to be removed, charged, prosecuted, and then they need to in, continue to investigate all of these criminal gangs that are posing as officers and posing a grave threat to all of us. Thank you so much for your work. I really appreciate the work all of you are doing. And I only said before that people should be investigated if nothing is happening, because I don't know much about this commission, but I believe it's your responsibility to check the powers and the powers are out of control. So the rule of law must be enforced and it clearly hasn't been done yet. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Julie Martinez. Please go ahead with your comment. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, I think it's extremely important that the, the COC understand that the problems that exist within the, the Sheriff Department are too big and they need, we need an outside investigation. We already understand that the FBI identifies the Sheriff Department as having criminal internal gangs and are investigating it. We already know that we as a community have been complaining for years that there have been internal gangs that exist so far back at East LA Station, for example, that the community has identified as Villanueva being part of the East LA gang. In addition to that, when we complained in the past that there were gangs, nobody really believed us. Who would have thought that within this, within a month, that Sheriff Ian Wave identified 26 in, um, gang members within East LA Station and is considering firing or, or, or um, processing some type of complaint against his own officers? When the community speaks, please listen. This problem is too large and too big for for any type of internal investigation into these deaths and murders by the sheriff department. Outside help is needed. Many in the community have been raising this issue for years that the attorney general of California must be forced into taking over the sheriff department. We already know the, the former sheriff is in jail, Baca. There is the, this, the level of racism that exists within the sheriff department cannot be fixed overnight. We need the attorney general. We need to put pressure. We understand that the attorney, attorney general is reluctant to do this. We would hope that your body can be that catalyst for change to force the attorney general to take over the sheriff's department. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Jacqueline Venters. Please go ahead with your comment, Jacqueline. Yes, I just wanted to say that uh, the sheriff's department has been disrespectful to your agency, MRT, and the um, Office of Inspector General. Just last July, Sergeant John Gutierrez refused to do an investigation after having all the documentation showing that Timnell Billis was innocent of the crime that they charged him of and told me that uh, if he wasn't doing anything after the request from 
Mac Huntsman's office. And it's really sad that they're allowed to get away with this. Mac Huntsman, to my understanding, you have subpoenaed things from their office also, and they refuse to send them out. I'm just wondering how, how do these things be handled? Right now, today, you know, with my case, it's old, but I never allowed it to get cold because first my trust and faith was in God of the shooting of my son, Tanel Billis, five times in the back by Deputy Gonzalo Azusa that had shot four people already. I knew the gangs was real because I witnessed it firsthand with my son leaving from court, getting back to the county jail where they had already called back there and told him who he was and they had him jump. They jumped him. And the, the uh, retaliation went on based on a lie that this deputy did. How are they allowed to investigate themselves when they don't? This is why my son is in jail right now, because they don't investigate themselves. This is the second, third, fourth attempt to get an investigation, and they have the documentation, which came from them excluding him from this gun that they planted. That whistleblower that I know for, that's a deputy here in our city, he told my son's whole story from the beginning to the end. Everything that he said that they did, that's what they did to my child. And he needs to come home. How long is it going to take for these things to be overturned? I'm waiting on the public defender's uh, documentation that he's been waiting nine years for, and they're going to give it to me. And I want to put it in you guys' hand and see what you guys are going to do with it, showing the innocence of him and the unjust, not over in the yeah. sheriff's department, but in the courtroom. Thank you. Thank you. And the next public comment will come from Tupe Asista. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Tupe, and I've been um, I've been hearing the last uh, couple of people speak, and I totally agree with how do the police and the and I totally um, their needs, and I need order. As far as who, um, what agency should be allowed to police them, because this is not fair to the public and the citizens and taxpayers that they get to use our money to pay off for the crimes that they do. They don't get held accountable. I have a loved one now sitting in Men's Central Jail, um, Henry Gilbert, who's been harassed, bullied, and jumped by the Men's Central Deputy um, Sheriffs, and he's still sitting in jail since for the past three years, and no one done anything to help him and every time he goes to court he's being harassed by several deputies they're not being held accountable i go on your guys's website every so often to mac uh, mac uh, max hutsman's oig department to file complaints every single time and i feel like an idiot because i feel like how am i filing a complaint against the people who are who i'm complaining about it doesn't it, this it doesn't have any i don't feel good about this because every time i file a complaint complaint, my loved one gets harassed or he gets bullied or his mail doesn't get his mail doesn't get sent out. And it's just ridiculous. This is this is like childish games and they're getting paid to to do this to our loved ones in jail. And it's just not fair. And we do need to change the order and people need somebody needs to step in to help our loved ones. This is just not right. And I'm tired of this stuff. I'm tired of sitting over here filing complaints online and all I'm getting that they're taking care of it. Why am I taking care of it for that? Because every time I turn around and get a phone call back from my loved one, it's something else happening. And I'm afraid for his life. And what's next? I get a call that he's dead? This is craziness. Thank you. The comment will come. TK, please go ahead with your comment, TK. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please. So um, we absolutely need independent an independent investigation on police violence and murder. It's been going on for decades. Police were founded in slave catching. The attorney general absolutely needs to get involved. We need also hold the sheriff and the DA accountable along with the deputies for being complicit with police sanctioned violence and crimes against humanity. Um, we need to fire Villanueva. We need to defund the police. This is why we say defund the police for their ongoing decades of police murder and abuse and harassment in black and brown communities. And we need to put those resources into our community for mental health workers, housing coordinators, healthcare, education, youth programs, and food resources. And in addition, the families that are impacted, the continued harassment of these families is unacceptable. And they're waiting literally months, days, and years for autopsy reports, videos, uh, 
all any report relating to the case. And so I don't understand how two deputies can be impacted. And that video comes out the same day, but you got family members that are, their loved ones been murdered and they're not, they don't even have access. And in fact, the thing about covering up uh, how Dijon Kesey's body laid in the street for 18 hours was them covering up the police murder. They were, uh, that crime scene was his body laid in the street for 18 hours so they could cover up their dirty work, how they murdered Dijon. And this goes on with almost every case. So they try to, Andreas Gordardo, same thing. The videos weren't released. They probably edited them. They hid them. The families weren't able to receive them. The ongoing police gang involvement needs to be un uncovered and they just need to be defunded and shut down. Thank you for that comment. And Chair Rubin, this does conclude our public comments on this item. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I think that uh, um, what we certainly heard is that there is a lot of um, public support for um, the, the basic idea behind the resolution, um, which is to um, uh, request that the um, the attorney general come in on this investigation um, and that it is something that the Board of Supervisors should have a hand in. So with that, um, I refer this to the ad hoc committee um, to uh, uh, fine tune um, the resolution and um, and also as um, Patty Giggins suggested really to come up with a protocol about um, how resolutions are, um, what they should be um, comprised of and um, and how to operate from there. I think it was a good suggestion. Yes, Priscilla. Um, so I just had a, a question um, for, for you and for the commission about um, a practice that we had started some time ago, and then I think, you know, just uh, urgency of issues kind of uh, um, got in the way. But we had initially discussed when we had reports having uh, an informational item and voting on it, um, and that we haven't been doing that recently. And I think this, this discussion, uh, you know, demonstrates why that's a good practice. So we've been able to hear the concerns make revisions and then and then bring bring the item back before the commission. Um, right. So I don't know if we want to I'm just putting it out there if it's something that we want to go back to or um, if we don't think it's necessary. But um, I do think it's good for us to actually be able to discuss things rather than having the sort of, uh, you know, pressure of uh, having to make a decision one way or the other um, as we're trying to edit a document. Right. Um I think that's a, a good suggestion and a good way of operating. Um, and frankly, I think the discussion both this morning on um, the resolution on violence um, raised issues about how we ought to proceed. And I think that um, uh, discussions on um, how we go about making a request for an independent investigation, it gives everybody an opportunity, at least in this forum, to uh, express some views, but because of the Brown Act, we can't do it any other way. So it's kind of a, um, combines both, both methods here. Um, uh, Mr. Williams, did you have anything that you wanted to add to this at this point? Uh, no, we'll make sure that we'll uh, sign a member of our staff. Not sure who that's going to be just yet to this ad hoc committee. But we're hoping to have this committee meet uh, rather soon. That's, um, I think that's, that's a great idea. Um, so, um, uh, I think that the, the next item on the agenda is agenda item 2D discussion and update regarding the sheriff's efforts to address COVID-19 issues in the jail and a draft report, which has been attached to the um, to the agenda. Um, as as you know from all of the times that um, the subject of COVID nineteen in the jail has been um, on our agenda, um, and the input that we've had, um, it is still not complete. 
Um, and it's fair to say that um, while this pandemic continues um, and um, people are getting are getting sick in a variety of ways that even though there is a draft report, um, you, I would request that you believe it to be not a um, not a final report um, because we're going to continue to have input on it. <coughs> um, with that said, um, I don't I don't know if members of the commission have any comments on um, the draft report, the 11 pages plus um, exhibits and attachments that have been um, that have been included on the agenda. Um, uh, whether you want to have input at this point in time, um, I will say that one of the things that we all felt very strongly about is that, um, and especially in light of the fact that we recently learned the population in the jail is on the upswing again. The sheriff had gone from um, reducing the jail population from, I believe, 17,000 down to 12. Now it's moving up again. Um, and many folks believe that even if it were to remain at 12, um, considering the physical layout in the jail and um, that there really is no way of safely protecting um, so many inmates. So one of the recommendations that um, you can see at the um, at the end of the um, the draft report is that there continues to be a um, a reduction in jail population. Um, we also believe that um, there is um, is too much of an ad hoc response to um, different operations in different in, in different jail facilities. Um, there is no uniform protocol across the board. Um, we've learned of some significant concern of how um, um, correctional health and the sheriff are really working together or not. Um, so that, um, I mean, what what you see in this report is where we are at the present time, but it's hard to think that it will ultimately be finished um, while we continue to have so many issues and um, you know the, the the least of which goes to the courts being open, transportation, um, the lack of sufficient video equipment, um, and the list goes on. So I open it up for um, comments, certainly from members of the um, the COVID-19 ad hoc committee, first of all, and um, and then from other commissioners. Um, Priscilla, um, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, I think you, you did a great job of summarizing uh, the work that we've done and the report. Um, I wanna thank uh, Daniel Deladio for all of the work that he's done in helping the committee uh, do its work. Um, one, one of the things that I want to underscore that you said that we heard from uh, nearly everyone, uh, there was universal agreement that the population is too large to be safely housed. Um, that not only does it endanger the people who are being held in uh, LA County facilities, it endangers the staff, it endangers the sworn staff, the civilian staff, um, and it endangers the community. There have been a number, there at least at least one that I'm aware of, uh, a study out of uh, Cook out of uh, Cook County, Illinois, uh, that found that um, jails were responsible for significant community spread of COVID-19 uh, because of the lack of control of uh, the virus within jails, and then people are released. And uh, in this case, um, in LA County, we don't test people upon release. Uh, so folks could be positive when they go home um, and spread that to their friends and family um, and their broader community. And so uh, in order to mitigate that, uh, the, the bottom line is we have to reduce the population. Of course, we've, we've there's already been a population reduction of uh, about 30% since 
um, uh, February or March of this year, but that's uh, just the beginning of the work. Um, and so we're, as uh, the report notes, calling on county justice partners, the district attorney's office, the office of uh, diversion and reentry, uh, the sheriff's department um, and the courts to move more aggressively to identify people who are eligible for, to be eligible for release. Um, and I also wanna add um, something that, uh, and lift up something that um, uh, Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas said, uh, in line with our uh, concerns about uh, folks with mental health, that should be a priority, um, making sure that folks uh, are released into community care um, where they can be adequately supported. Um, and we also want to be mindful of the county's commitment to anti-racism and ensuring that uh, whatever releases occur um, and they need to occur are done in equitable fashion. Um, so I want to thank uh, again uh, uh, our staff for their assistance and um, I want to also thank you, Commissioner uh, and Chair Rubin, uh, who not only chairs this commission now, but also is chairing the COVID-19 uh, committee um, and has really been, uh, you've really been wonderful about um, making sure that we meet frequently, that we hear from folks who have direct knowledge of what's going on um, and that we uh, lift up uh, what's happening inside of the jails because um, at this point, there are no visitors, uh, there's no programming. Um, and so the folks who are most directly impacted um, have the uh, least access to information and the least ability to share what's happening. Um, thank, thank you. And I'm so glad you mentioned um, all of the work that Daniel Delgadillo did. I mean, he's has been the, the life force behind this ad hoc committee with his, um, his hard work and dedication. And um, we wouldn't have gotten to this point without um, his tremendous support and help. And um, um, I, I think that um, one of the things that that you mentioned in terms of um, um, Commissioner Ochen about um, people in jail not having visitors, the attorneys can't go. So there is no way for them to um, speak with their attorney um, unless they go to court, which presents other issues, or um, unless there is developed some confidential way of communicating with their attorney, um, either by telephone or, or video. Um, and so, you know, you go back and you ask, um, we need to reduce the jail population. Um, Sean Kennedy, who is um, uh, uh, an important member of this ad hoc committee was unavoidably um, not here today. Um, Commissioner Harris, I don't know if you wanted to add anything at this point. I don't know if we can get to Commissioner Harris. He had some um, <clears throat> some connectivity issue. Um, if he if he does wish to add um, add his voice, he certainly knows how to let us know that um, at this point, are there any, is there any input or any questions from any of the commissioners? Oh, sorry, uh, I do have one other thing um, and, and uh, Commissioner uh, Chair Rubin, I think, you know, we had discussed this. Um, the, as the report currently reads, uh, starting on page, uh, sorry, starting on page, um, I think it's two, uh, the, head, the header is a coordination between LASD and Correctional Health Services. And the, the first line says that CHS and LASD appear to work collaboratively on significant aspects of COVID-19 operations. Um, I don't believe that the committee believes that to be true conclusively, um, given new information that we've received. Um, so just, I just want to kind of lift that up, that there are some concerns that um, there isn't enough coordination between public health, CHS, and uh, the Sheriff's Department, uh, because as Chair Rubin said, um, things seem to be more like ad hoc fashion. Um, with clear coordination between uh, the two entities. Although uh, we did hear from uh, uh, Assistant Sheriff Ruth Chase um, that 
he believes they are working collaboratively, but we we've, we've also received information to the contrary. Commissioner Vera. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, and thank you to the commissioners that worked on this. I think I think it's a great report, and I just want to register my frustration with us not being able to prove it today. We have strong recommendations. The recommendation to decrease the population is important. It's needed now. It needs to get to the supervisors now. Same thing happened with our immigration report. Where we took over two years. I mean, we are making the perfect the enemy of the good. I was ready to vote on this. I don't know what else we need on it. So. I, I, I appreciate that if we can make any report better, of course, but we need to move on this. The, I hear from the community every week on this issue, and I think we should should have been in a position to, to prove this today. Thank you for that. Um, um, I happen to agree with that, so thank you for that. Um, Patty? You're muted, Patty. And embedded in the report are recommendations, you know, more masks, more coordination, reduce the population. I read in the letter from the from the court that they have a zero bail policy in the court. Is that still true for for um, misdemeanors and lesser felonies? Um, if that is, is that still true? If that is still true, I'm, I am curious on where the um, increase is coming from. Uh, when we're supposed to be focusing on a downward spiral. Um, and one of the things that is that I've been thinking about, I don't know if this is going to be helpful at all, but I know we've heard from CCS, we've heard from Sybil Brandt, we heard, you know, we, we've we had reports, um, but we've also heard from, uh, um, uh, I, I think it's, is it Deputy Sheriff Ch Chase? I don't know what it is, yeah, um, about how some yeah, he uh, he sometimes doesn't know. He 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 was very frank sometimes when he said, "I'm going to go check up on that." Oh, I did not hear that. So, what I I'm wondering if, since we hear weekly from Dr. Barbara Ferrer, who heads up the whole entire county uh, public health, if there is a way, could we invite some more visibility around what's going on in the jail. I mean, this is a confined population. We hear about nursing homes all the time. We get, you know, up to date, how many deaths, what's going on, et cetera, um, and where the challenges are. Is there any way that we might, as a commission, reach out to the head, the director of the Department of Public Health and ask if there is a way for them to include this issue uh, which is so vital um, in their in their weekly reports, in their biweekly reports, so that the entire county, who's concerned, we are all concerned with COVID and being safe, can hear about where we are. I still feel it's under it's under it's like a shell game, you know, to find out what's going on and where the improvements are. And I'm not even saying that it's malintentioned. I just don't think we have enough light focused and um, community focus um, on the topic so that it needs more illumination. That's a suggestion that I have. Um, I think that's a great suggestion in terms of getting, um, making, you know, having um, uh, the, you know, weekly stats that you hear through the rest of the county um, from Dr. Furry, it, it, if, it includes the the um, the jail issues. I think um, because too much of this is under the radar. I think that's a great suggestion, and um, I would I would uh, certainly make that recommendation uh, to her. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, any other commissioners have any input on this? Um, um, I would like to hear uh, from the comment. Yes. Yeah, Commissioner Harris here. Oh. I was finally finally able to reconnect. I was um, looking for you earlier. No, I, I know you were. I was here. Uh, I had a technical problem. So I could hear you just fine, but I was unable to speak, and I can speak now. So just briefly, I agree. I, I really want to thank uh, uh, staff uh, Dan Delgadillo for all the work he's done on this. He's done an incredible job. I appreciate the comments you made in, uh, in Commissioner Ochen. 
on this. I do think um, highlighting the fact that um, yeah, we, we do need to reduce the jail population. We also, though, need to really double, redouble our efforts on doing something to allow for those inmates who cannot be released to limit their movement in and out of that jail going to court and to provide them with the ability to meet with counsel uh, while still uh, within sheriff's facilities. Um, we have been wrestling with this for a long time, and we really need to continue to uh, emphasize the importance of having a uh, virtual um, platform by which uh, those who are in custody can, in fact, have confidential communication with their counsel. This idea that they would be able to pick up any phone in the jail and talk with their counsel, that does not afford confidential communication. That is, that is not going to work. I think there are solutions to this, but people have got to work. Our justice partners have got to work together on this problem. But again, recognizing reducing the jail population to the lowest possible level we can, that is goal one. But then for those that remain, we've got to limit that um, uh, movement in and out of custody because that is just a gigantic uh, spreading mechanism. Um, so the more that that can be uh, emphasized, uh, the better. And I agree with uh, uh, Commissioner Ochin. I think we do need to also look at this issue of testing people as they're, uh, as they're released. Now, obviously, to do that effectively would mean a couple of days before their release date that they would be tested. So when they walk out the door, they have the results as opposed to releasing them. Even if you test them the day they're released, they still wouldn't have it for a couple of days. That really doesn't do uh, a whole lot of good, um, but I appreciate the effort that's gone into this report. I think, yeah, there's still a lot of work needs to happen. I think having uh, Department of um, Health um, giving periodic updates, because you're right, too much of this seems to be under the radar. Uh, knowing what the infection rate is, um, is really important, not just for us in the community, but for those people working in the facilities. They want to know you know, what is going on? Is this an infection rate going down or is it going up or is it staying the same? And we're hearing that they don't know that uh, in any real time manner and that has got to be rectified. So I'll, I'll end my comments there. Um, thank you. Um, at this point in time, um, I'd like to take public comment. Um, Priscilla, you had something else you wanted to add? Uh, I just wanted to answer the question that um, uh, Commissioner Giggins put on the table, which is why uh, the population is going up. Um, so we don't have a, a you know a, a concrete or conclusive answer on this, but part of it is that um, uh, state prisons aren't accepting uh, new admissions because of uh, concerns about COVID. Arrests are still happening. Uh, and um, uh, people are still being held pre-trial because they can't afford uh, bail when they don't fall within uh, the criteria for um, being released on their own recognizances. Um, we have also heard some concerns about um, uh, the district attorney's office, uh, you know, essentially blocking uh, the release of people who have been identified by other justice partners, including the sheriff's department and ODR. Um, so, I think those three things, the fact that we still continue to make, um, uh, obviously, arrests, um, uh, many people uh, are being um, uh, hit with bail um, because the district attorney is requesting it uh, and they can't um, get out. Uh, and then the last bit is that people who are in custody who've been recommended for early release uh, are having difficulty being released. And I think. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Huntsman wanted to add uh, or, or respond to some of the comments that have been made. Yeah, um, and before I, I did see that, thank you. Um, before we we get to um, hear from um, the Inspector General, um, uh, I think that um, from everything that I've learned, um, the um, the fact that the state prison system um, is is not accepting new um, new inmates and they're filtering down to the county level seems to be um, probably the greatest percentage of where the increase has come from. Um, 
Did you want to um, add something at this point? Yes, uh, the report states, and it's been discussed by a couple of commissioners that uh, the population is starting to go back up again, and we have a 30% reduction from the, the high we were at. That's not correct. Um, we it's gone up already. We are up to 13,900 now. The 12,000 figure is ancient history, um, and and the reason it's gone up is because, as you heard from Bruce Chase, there's identified something like a thousand or or, or so nonviolent criminals. And the sheriff has declined to come and discuss this. The matter you subpoenaed with him, he has stated publicly there are only violent prisoners left in the jail. So, so the releasing process that was initially pulling a lot of people out of jail who were nonviolent has essentially stalled. And and as a result, now the, through arrests, we're arresting more people and bringing people in. So I just want to make sure that twelve thousand figure that's in the report that's not accurate. It's thirteen thousand nine hundred today. Yeah, I think that that you know the the twelve thousand in the report um, referred to a certain date that it was that it was twelve thousand, um, but um, it is this, uh, this, makes, this points to an urgency. It seems to me, if we're up to oh, that's two thousand, that's two thousand more in a couple of months. Um, what do we do about that? Where do we where do we exert our influence so that this doesn't go back up to seventeen thousand, which was uh, untenable? Um, one of the things we really need to do is, um, and again, this is a reason for at least this interim report to go to the board. Um, have the board step in and say, um, various county agencies, you got to get your act together to reduce. Um, the the level of the jail population. And I think that this is something that um, uh, Supervisor Ridley Thomas spoke to um, this morning and also feels strongly about. So at this point, I'd like to um, see how many, uh, how much public comment there is so that we can figure out the rest of the time because we still have some other items um, before we can adjourn. Jennifer, how many? Uh, People have signed up for public comment on this. Four individuals. All right. Why don't we go ahead and take that, and then um, when that is concluded, um, I am going to urge um, the rest of the commission members that we move this forward. But at least let's hear from um, you know those members of public comment. Okay. And before we go into Public comment and announcement in Spanish. Si necesita una traducción al español de sus comentarios, por diga la palabra español y alguien traducir sus comentarios cuando termine. Gracias. Thank you. And the first comment will come from M. W. M. W. You are unmuted. Please go ahead with your comment. Okay, so today we've heard, I mean, just a few minutes ago, we've got 13,900 individuals incarcerated. That's 2,000 people above capacity during a pandemic. We've heard that our sheriff is opening fire on peaceful protesters, gunning down people in the streets, um, all, all sorts of laws that he's breaking. And while this meeting has gone on at about 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, your sheriff, Sheriff Bill on the tweeted his own words. In keeping with my promise for transparency, LA Sheriff's Department will be hosting a press conference today at 3 p.m. at the Hall of Justice to release details of the Dijon Kizzy uh, deputy involved shooting. So while he is not following the law and appearing here with you all in accordance to measure R while he is not responding to your subpoenas while you have the offer office of inspector general here giving one illegal fact after another this sheriff is totally out of control running a propaganda machine unlike none this country has ever seen going to stand at the Hall of Justice when we had testimony here today of peaceful protesters, citizens, 
where the Hall of Justice was risen for, not being allowed to stand on the steps of the Hall of Justice. This body has to create a plan to get this sheriff under control, get him to follow the law, and allow the law to be the preeminent order of the day, not deputy gangs. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Julie Martinez. Please go ahead with your comment. Yeah, I'd like to reiterate, please listen to us. And all due respect, um, Ms. Giggins, you had raised a question as where is the population increase coming from? You please do not speak yet. Please allow for there to be some um, research done. You need to understand this entire body needs to understand understand that the sheriff department is an animal that exists to manufacture crime statistics in order to justify their mega budgets. Please understand they are desperate for arrest at this time. Please listen to us in the community. They create a percentage of the crime by their own malfeasance. They present manufactured um, statistics. We in the community have witnessed this. We know that we've already caught them creating fake statistics on fake calls that didn't come in. For a simple code violation, for example, they call out 10 deputies. In this particular instant that I'm referring to, it was a big code violation of a woman that stood under five feet tall, 10 deputies. They, for a basic code violation of expired tax, they, they proceeded to search her car, found cash and accused her of drug dealing. The sheriff department is manufacturing statistics and manufacturing arrest. The jails should not be at this capacity. In order for Sheriff Ian Weva to justify such a huge budget, he will continue to manufacture crime and arrest people on, on issues that sh never should be arrested and including, including very simple code violations. Listen, we're in a pandemic. We need to reduce. We need to reduce the crime, the population of the of the jails, to stop the spread of this virus. This is extremely important. Please proceed with what you are doing. Thank you. And the next public comment will, will be the last one for this item. This from T K. Please go ahead with your comment. Hi. Um, I'd just like to note that Dijon Kesey was uh, murdered over a bike violation. I didn't even know you can get pulled over on your bike. And I want to say, um, where are these arrests coming from? What makes up, what part of the community makes up these arrests? This, since crime last noted was actually down during COVID, um, I'm feeling that the homeless population is further being criminalized when they were, the city of LA was ordered to house these folks and nothing's been done. That population has grown. They're further, further criminalized. Um, maybe the arrests are from protesters actually too for seeking justice. Um, so I, I, I'm really trying to figure out what the statistics are or what community members are being arrested and for what. And these are nonviolent crimes during COVID. And this is why we're saying, like, defund the police and close the jails. Like, you're eating up uh, needed resources and community dollars where it needs to be in our communities. And I'm also concerned for the health care of those that are incarcerated and the pushback on the community members that are incarcerated. Um, we absolutely need to let these folks out that are on nonviolent crimes and get rid of the, uh, the bail. There should be no bail right now, especially during COVID. People don't have jobs to bail their family members out as well. They're not working. And if you're in there for nonviolent crime, you're further exposing the people to COVID and the people there, I'm concerned about their well-being. I'm concerned about them getting health care and we want them out. Right. And so the sheriff also needs to be held accountable. He's trying to run, like the woman said, his propaganda machine and just further uh, get uh, votes during election time. Thank you. And Chair Rubin, that does conclude all public comment for this item. Thank you very much. Um, 
what I um, what I suggest we do at this point, um, I I would like to move this um, this draft report, um, um, and I, I I do think that there needs to be some um, revision in the um, in the paragraph coordination between <coughs> LASD and Correctional Health Services. That's on. On page two, but that's very minor, um, and I really think that um, it is incumbent upon us. And I, I like the idea that, you know, we're never going to get something perfect, but the idea that um, uh, we need to make sure that more more inmates are released from the jail, um, and there is <clears throat> better testing, and there is. Um, uh, equal um, discussion and and in in terms of what goes on in in various jail facilities um, I do think we need to move forward on this so um, unless there is a, any objection um, I'd ask that we take a vote on um, on moving this report forward uh, I move to approve the covid 19 uh, ad hoc committee's report I second. Um, all right, so there it's been moved and seconded. Um, shall we, uh, um, Ingrid, do you want to um, take, you know, call for the vote? Sure. Uh, Commissioner Bond. Uh, look, I'm thinking of releasing more inmates and talking public safety. Um, so I wrote had a chance to report. I'm going to abstain. Commissioner Giggins? Approve. Commissioner Harris? I vote to approve. Commissioner Kuchin? Yes. Chair Rubin? Yes, approve. Commissioner Thompson? Commissioner Thompson? Uh, yeah. Commissioner Tolentino? Vice Chair Barra? Yes. The report is approved. All right, thank you all very much. Um, I think that this is, uh, this is an important um, statement and um, hopefully we'll be able to um, to assure that um, the jail population is reduced um, and at the same time assure that public safety is not is not compromised um, I'd like to move to agenda item number three commission updates and start out with the executive director's report Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, very briefly, I did want to announce we we're able to hire a new uh, staff analyst, and he will begin his uh, his tenure with the commission uh, in just a couple of weeks. So more information on that will be forthcoming. I'm also extremely pleased to announce that we'll get Jennifer Osborne back to us full time. As I'm sure you all know, Jennifer has been assigned to uh, the Joint Information Center since March. Uh, but she's coming back to us at the end of this month. So uh, we definitely need her back. So welcome back, Jennifer. Happy to have her here. Um, I made an inquiry with uh, County Council. I know that Commissioner Vera had mentioned this earlier uh, about uh, the opportunities for outside counsel for the commission. And I know County Council has done a bit of research on that. So I'm wondering if Chair Rubin, if we could ask uh, Alex to just sort of give her opinion on the ability of the COC to have independent counsel for matters facing the, the commission. That's that's a great idea. Um, it's come up before and um, it seems now more than ever something that um, we should urge county council to consider. So um, Alex, if you want to um, speak on this issue. Thank you. As you know, this commission was created by the Board of Supervisors. 
Under the county's charter, county council exclusively advises and represents the board of supervisors and its commissions in all civil actions and proceedings. Circumstances that may warrant separate counsel would never be present here. I don't know. I don't understand how, how can you say that. I respectfully disagree. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't think I can I just can I sorry, Sh Madam Chair, may I speak? Of course. Um, uh, I, I, that's, a, that's a curious position for county council to take. Um, I would like maybe a written summation uh, with support for how you reach the conclusion that uh, there would never be a conflict that would rise to the level um, of a need for outside counsel. Um, I can think of uh, at least five off the top of my head um, where we indeed would need outside counsel. I don't think that the Civilian Oversight Commission is like most other commissions. Um, in the county in that we may be in conflict uh, with a county agency. Um, perhaps maybe when the probation commission comes on board, they may have similar issues, but they have a different relationship with the uh, chief of probation than we do with the sheriff's department, um, which is led by a separately elected official. Um, so I do think that interests diverge uh, significantly on a number of issues when we're trying to assert our oversight authority um, in ways that are quite different from any other, uh, from, from, from my view, any other um, commission in the county. Um, and with regard to the subpoena issue, um, uh, there is, this is a prime example of where outside counsel is necessary because of the conflict. Um, that emerges with the county council representing both the sheriff um, and supervising any council that we have for the commission. For example, I know that we were told uh, about, for example, settlement discussions with the uh, sheriff's department in relationship to our um, uh, subpoena um, motion, our subpoena and our, con our contempt uh, petition. Um, and it seems to me that that's not in the interest uh, from my perspective of the commission, given that we really need to get an authoritative opinion on the legality of our uh, subpoena orders um, or our subpoenas that we issue. So I can go on, but um, uh, yeah, I, I would just say I, uh, I join uh, uh, Commissioner Bonner in disagreeing with the idea that there would never um, uh, be a circumstance under which uh, outside counsel uh, would be warranted. Any other commissioner want to speak to this issue? Um, I, I yes, Commissioner Tolentino. I would agree with Commissioner Ocean and Commissioner Bonner. There has to be some exception. Separate and, and apart from that, separate and apart from that, I think it is um, it is essential um, uh, for County Council to. To put this in writing, um, I mean, particularly with a blanket statement of there's never a situation where there's a conflict of interest. Um, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I think that that is frankly, um, with all due respect to, uh, Ms. Zwiderweg, that it is a little glib to say that. And, um, um, I, I think that there needs to be. Um, some formal um, memorandum to us um, that um, that that is not an issue that county council wants to take up as seriously as we believe it should be. And and frankly, uh, sorry, just to to add on to that, um, I think this is actually an issue where there's a conflict uh, where county council is telling us. Um, that there's no such no no uh, there's no circumstance set of circumstances under which we could have outside counsel outside of them. So I, I think we should have outside counsel actually opine on this um, instead of county council, which has an interest um, in terms of how they represent us. And the county obviously um, would, might have to fork over some money to pay for um, independent counsel for the commission. So. I think we need to have an independent entity uh, assess um, this question um, because here we have a conflict. Yes, Patty. Yeah. Um, didn't we hear 
or I heard, or maybe it was from the IG or somewhere, I think I heard, or attending a Board of Supervisors meeting that actually um, Sheriff Villanueva made a, a, a kind of a complaint that how can you have county council represent the county, the board, and represent me in our disputes? And I believe that the sheriff, in terms of our subpoena, has outside counsel. Uh, and it's not county council that's representing him. So it's 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 kind of confusing. I think there's been a lot of different commentary on when it's appropriate to go outside and who would pay for that and when can you ask for it from the county? When can you reject county council um, uh, taking on the issues? So this I, I agree with everyone that's that's saying we need to have uh, a more thoughtful um, approach to our question. Yeah, I, again, I would renew my request um, for um, Ms. Um, Zwiederweg to um, to put in writing what County Council's position is, and um, it may, as um, Commissioner Ochen uh, suggested, necessitate um, having outside counsel advise on this issue. I mean, it's. That's certainly done in um, in litigation all the time, um, but at the very least, we need to have something in writing. So, um, Ms. Uh, Zwiederweg, um, do you need us to vote on that, or can we just um, can I just ask that you um, uh, prepare something in writing for us? As, as long as the majority of the membership agrees with the request, then, then I'm happy to do so. Um, you're welcome to take a formal vote. All right. All right. I think um, will we um, I think we can take a voice vote on this um, and, and do it in the negative. Is there anybody who disagrees that um, um, we don't need any um, formal memorandum from um, County Council on this issue? All right, hearing no disagreement, um, um, everybody else is unanimous, and um, I would um, would urge you to provide that um, as soon as you can. And I think then then we can decide where to go at this point. Before, before, before. Yes. Yes, I, I agree. Um, that um, you can, um, you should certainly provide it to um, the executive director well before our next meeting, and um, he can um, disseminate that to the rest of us. Commissioner Ochen, did you want to add something? Yeah, and I just wanted to be clear that um, we would like to have a memorandum uh, outlining county council's position um, it, with as much detail as possible. Um, and with citations to whatever uh, ordinances um, uh, or state laws that you're relying on or any precedent uh, from the California Superior or Supreme Court uh, so that we can analyze the reasoning behind your position that there would never be an occasion uh, where there would be a conflict between, uh, the, between county council representing us and the sheriff's department. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Williams, did you have anything else that you wanted to add on your um, in your in your executive director report? No, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Um, and um, Mr. Huntsman, do you have anything in addition from the Inspector General? I do not. Okay. Um, anything from any of the um, ad hoc committees um, that we haven't? heard from who want to have some input. Commissioner Ocha. I uh, just want to update folks on the Measure R uh, uh, ad hoc committee, uh, which is comprised of uh, myself, Commissioner Bonner, Commissioner Kennedy, and Commissioner Harris. Um, we are meeting uh, frequently uh, uh, every other week, and we're hearing from, uh, we're beginning to hear from uh, folks uh, who have um, expertise on the charge that we've been uh, given uh, by Measure R. 
uh, and we are also seeking uh, support from the county to uh, be able to produce the kind of um, report that uh, voters in LA County expect from us on this critical issue of justice reinvestment. That's great. Um, Commissioner Bonner. Yes, uh, this is. With great reluctance that I'm calling for Sheriff Villanueva to resign. I don't take this step lightly, uh, and I only do so because it's become apparent that he's demonstrated on multiple occasions that he lacks the judge needed to be the sheriff and that he's unable to provide the leadership needed by the sheriff's department. I'm only going to mention a few actions that the sheriff that sheriff's taken that have led me to believe that the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department itself deserves better and that the men and women of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department deserve better. From the very beginning of his tenure, when he reinstated former deputy, uh, former deputy, uh, Deputy Mendoyan, who had been terminated for misconduct, Sheriff Villanueva has demonstrated a lack of judgment and a lack of the abil ability to assess and reconsider his actions. Second, he's the only sheriff in modern Los Angeles history, and I'm going back to Sheriff Peter Pitches, who has no effective relationship with the Board of Supervisors. Please understand when I say this, the sheriff is an independent elected official, and he is not beholden to the Board of Supervisors, nor should he be. But for the good of the Sheriff's Department, any sheriff knows, or should know, except apparently Sheriff Villanueva, that one should strive to develop a positive relationship with the Board of Supervisors. Not only has he failed to do so, he's gone out of his way to alienate and even insult supervisors. Thirdly, he's resisted efforts to provide oversight of the Sheriff's Department. When the Commission asked him to appear and brief us regarding the actions being taken at the LA County Sheriff's Department's the LA County Jail, in light of COVID-19, uh, he declined our invitation. When we reluctantly issued a subpoena to compel his attendance, he defied it, and he sent uh, Assistant Sheriff Chase in his stead. Fifth, the Office of the Inspector General is the investigative arm of the Civilian Oversight Commission. Not only has the sheriff resisted providing information needed for legitimate oversight to the IG, but what can only be described as a crude intimidation tactic he indicated that the sheriff's department was investigating the inspector general, Mr. Huntsman. Six, in a time where reforms are being demanded and are long overdue, he has generally dragged his feet. He issued a policy last spring, which I and the commission applauded, that prohibits deputy cliques or deputy gangs, uh, but he's done little or nothing to enforce that policy. Next, I have reluctantly concluded that the LA Sheriff's Department, which has the potential to be one of the best, most professional law enforcement organizations in our country, and which has many, many ded dedicated deputies, deserves better. The Sheriff is in no way responsible, of course, for the attack on the two deputies last Saturday, but his handling after the fact uh, was not what one would expect from a mature law enforcement leader. I'm sorry to say this, but the baiting of, of a professional basketball player is ridiculous. Uh, a press spokesman tweeting racist loaded comments, evidently and unexplainably still working for the Sheriff's Department. It boggles the mind. Next, uh, the unexplained and unexplainable uh, is his handling of deputies who inappropriately took photos and shared photos of the Kobe Bryant accident scene. Uh, but look, the list goes on. I'm going to stop there and just say uh, that the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department deserves better, and so do the people of uh, Los Angeles County. And so I'm asking uh, Sheriff Bill and Nueva for the good of the LASD and our community to please resign. Let the record reflect I speak only for myself. I don't speak for any ad hoc committee nor do I speak for the commission as a whole, but I must speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Bonner. Um, Commissioner Ocha. Um, I was just say I'm, I'm um, 
I'm a little, I'm very surprised uh, that, that um, to, to hear what is a very eloquent statement, and I agree with it. Um, I do think the sheriff should resign for all the reasons you described, Judge, uh, and more. Uh, and for that reason, I would like to move uh, that the commission refer to the newly established resolution committee um, uh, and request that the committee draft uh, a resolution of no confidence in the sheriff. Commissioner Harris, that. Um, You're muted, uh, Chair. Any getting tired. Anybody else want to be heard on this on this subject? Yes, Commissioner Tolentino. I would support the motion. I think it's each time uh, we all those instances and circumstances that uh, Judge Bonner uh, articulated. I end up with like a simmering anger that this is what's happening with our sheriff's department. Um, each event, especially within the last month or so, and uh, it just seems like we we became very toothless at times. Um, to me, this is what uh, what we're supposed to be doing as a commission, an oversight of the uh, sheriff's department and to do it with a thoughtful and articulate means and an analysis. I think uh, Judge Bonner did so well. Uh, I would support the motion of sending it over to the resolution committee to draft uh, a more specific language and uh, take it from there. Thank you, um, Commissioner Giggins. You're good, Patty. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I really want to uh, express my respect for Commissioner Bonner for articulating a very tough position to take um, as an as an individual commissioner. And he's also, he's kind of launched a challenge to the rest of us. And what do we do with that sentiment and his um, suggestion? Uh, I appreciate what, uh, how Commissioner Ocean interpreted it as a possible resolution of no confidence. Now, those it's so to my to my mind those are not the same thing um they're they could be connected but they could also be completely separate things so i'm wondering if there's any guidance here because uh yeah we have a company we have a, a new ad hoc commission that could set make a resolution which is expressing the values positions concerns of our full body um and so I guess I, uh, before we go off and work on this, maybe a little bit more discussion to see the direction. Um, yeah, that's so, yeah, because they're two different things for me. Again, connected, but different. And thank you so much, Commissioner Bonner. Um, any other commissioner want to have any input at this point in time? Xavier Thompson. Yes, go ahead. With respect to uh, our previous speaker and former chair lady Giggins, um, I also want to go on record to uh, commend and applaud um, Commissioner Bonner for such a substantive um, and bold, a substantive statement and a bold stance. I think uh, they are. Uh, inextricably tied one to the other as it relates to what um, Commissioner Giggins were speaking about. I think we are in deep water now um, with this statement from Commissioner Bonner. I think it's now or never. We're in, let's let's go on and swim and not drown. And I think we can walk and chew gum at the same time um, as it relates to what. Commissioner Ocean said um, of punting this to the newly formed ad hoc commission to uh, put pen to pad as it relates to a resolution. I think we can do that simultaneously. Um, I would love to um, poll the commission of today calling for the resignation of the sheriff and accompany it 
with a resolution in the coming days. Thank you for that. Anybody else want to have any um, any other comment before we decide how we're going to proceed? Uh, Commissioner Bonner. Now let me just say, uh, I spoke for myself. I don't need to maintain. I just severed it. Uh, you need to maintain. I think the commission needs to maintain a relationship with the sheriff. So I just urge some caution before the entire commission, let's say, votes or calls for the uh, sheriff's resignation for that reason. Um, but um, I have no more to say about it. I think probably the smartest thing right now would be to uh, refer this, whatever further action the commission itself should take to the ad hoc committee. Uh, on resolutions and uh, and come back to the commission. But uh, speaking only for myself, but uh, I, I just reached the point and obviously it was very difficult uh, for me to come to this uh, point that I'm at, but I, I, I wanted to share it because uh, I feel it's important to, uh, at this point in time, to state my views. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, anybody else have a way uh, a thought about how to proceed with this? Madam Chair, may I respond to this? Go ahead. Madam Chair, may I respond to this? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, respectfully, thank you so much, Commissioner Bonner. We um, we definitely appreciate you taking that independent stand that is true to form, and, and you set precedent of, of, of speaking for yourself. Uh, this happened to be a matter that I believe collectively we can um, actually support you in your independence. Um, uh, secondly, I would accompany, my, I, I, I will follow up by saying with the chair and the vice chair um, remaining in a position whereby they can work with the sheriff. Uh, let me be clear. Um, it can be the position of this commission and of this chair and vice chair to work with the sheriff all day long. But if the sheriff has resolved, as his behavior has proven, that he is not willing to work with this commission, neither honor the um, independence of this commission or this chair of vice chair, I think it's 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 an exercise in futility. Um, if one have opted not to work with you, uh, you can put all of the effort in the world to attempt to work with them, but um, you won't get very far. I think it's now or never. Um, uh, sorry, I don't know if you called on me. Um, I so did. So uh, I do agree too that it's. I, I don't think it's important. I, I think that uh, we can we can draft a thoughtful statement uh, that outlines why we have no confidence in the ability of the sheriff to do his job. Um, and I take that as a call for the sheriff to step down um, if we believe as a commission that he is not capable of uh, filling this role with the level of professionalism. Uh, foresight and empathy that it requires, then he shouldn't be doing it uh, from my perspective. But I think that we need to have a very clear and thorough statement backing up um, that position. I don't know where other people stand, um, but I think it's worth at least two weeks to make sure we have a very clear, um, very forceful um, and uh, grounded statement in the facts for the public record. Uh, th thank you. Um, Patty, did you Commissioner have Harris. to add just a second? You're, you're muted. I'll, go, I'll uh, go after Commissioner Harris. All right. Um, Commissioner Harris. Well, first, I'd like to thank Commissioner Bonner for his statement. Um, he very eloquently articulated every area that I could think of. Um, this is a very difficult statement for me to make, having spent 35 years with that organization. But I have to say I agree with Commissioner Bonner. I think this should go to the 
newly formed committee ad hoc for the drafting of a resolution. I think the difference between a vote of no confidence and uh, asking for the resignation of the sheriff of Los Angeles County are pretty much the same thing, but I think it should be drafted. We give it some due deliberation. Um, but I couldn't agree more with the sentiments that uh, Commissioner Bonner has articulated. Um, so I think we need to move forward with this. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, Pastor Thompson, did you want to add anything at this point? No. Okay. Patty, did you want to add anything at this point? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I, uh, this is quite a serious step. And I feel like I want to say what I have said publicly before and that the sheriff's department does not have the leader it deserves. And I want to acknowledge the people in the sheriff's department who we have worked with, who we have continued to work with, those who do come here and those who come to our, midi our meetings, our ad hoc committee meetings, and try to help um, give us information. Uh, who don't stonewall or prevaricate, uh, who are professional, um, and it's kind of hard for me right now to, <laughs> I'm thinking of everyone that I've worked with, uh, over the past three and a half years in the department, um, who are deserving of great leadership and support. Um, so I, I, I just feel I, I really want to say that I want to, I want to call that out. Um, and that, uh, it is regrettable that after all this time of promise to for us to function uh, as oversight and how, how much effort we have made. Uh, and maybe this is the time to uh, not pretend anymore. Um, I think that's what, that's what we're being asked to consider. Uh, I think the community has, certainly community members have brought it up. You know, are we pretending to be an oversight commission? Everyone, everyone who comes to us says, what are you doing? Why can't you do something? Why can't you do more? And if it takes a resolution for us to write down why we can't do more, then, then let's do it. If we come to the conclusion that um, um, a no confidence leads to an actual recommendation, I guess if you are relying on this committee to do a draft, uh, we will do that. Um, but this is, uh, you know, we've gotten to this extremely serious point and I do not believe it was our, our making. Thank you. Um, unless there are, um, it, you know, there's any other comment from anybody, I would, um, like to, uh, refer this as the chair. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah. Council, yeah. council had an item that she wanted to raise concerning this discussion. Uh, okay, go ahead. Madam Chair, I just wanted clarification as to the action that is being proposed uh, so we can uh, ensure compliance with the Brown Act on this matter. Okay, uh, um, I didn't quite hear what you had to say. In order to uh, properly ensure compliance with the, with the Brown Act on this matter, I was just going to ask uh, for clarification regarding the action that is being proposed, which you were about to just uh, discuss. So if you can provide that clarification, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Well, I think the clarification is that um, um, I think it is appropriate to refer to the newly, uh, the newly formed ad hoc committee um, the question of um, whether um, there should be a resolution um, calling for the sheriff to resign or um, expressing a vote of no confidence or something else. It will be up to the, uh, the newly formed um, ad hoc committee to, um, to make that determination and then present it to the full commission. Um, does that solve your concern? Yes, thank you for your clarification. 
<laughs> All right. Um, so um, I would like to do that at this point and um, uh, refer it to the newly formed ad hoc um, ad hoc committee. Um, and hopefully you can um, get get to this fairly quickly so that um, we can um, know what you're proposing for um, for our next meeting. Um, with that, um, I think our um, we're running short of time. Um, we do need to have general public comment. And um, how many people do we have signed up for that, Jennifer? We have 20 individuals signed up for general public comment. All right, I am going to use the chair's prerogative and uh, limit that to one minute. Excellent. Would you like to start public comment now? Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Si necesita traducción en español para sus comentarios, simplemente diga la, tra la palabra español cuando comience y alguien traducirá sus comentarios cuando termine. Gracias. Thank you. And with each speaker having one minute, the first speak uh, uh, speaker will be Carlene Goyer. Please go ahead with your comment. Hi, um, listeners. I just wanted to continue on from what I was saying before, and I was hoping that if it is appropriate that the commission could uh, endorse the signing by the governor of SB 629, that's a bill that strengthens the protections for the press to gather and disseminate newsworthy information during protests. And um, it would specifically have protected uh, the SCPR KPCC reporter Josie Wong in this situation last Saturday. Um, so I would recommend that you take a look at this uh, bill that's sitting on his desk, and I would hope that you would encourage its um, signature. And it might also give you good language for any sort of a resolution you might consider in terms of protecting the press um, where their oversight, their essential service, their public service is not intimidated or chilled by brutal arrests and detainments for over five hours in dangerous situations. You know, the press is the only business that's mentioned in the US Constitution. And it's mentioned in the First Amendment. And it's a reason, there's a reason it's the First Amendment. If we don't have journalists to tell us what's going on in Los Angeles or the world, we would hear. And that has been one minute. Sorry. And the next public comment will come from Ernest. Please go ahead with your comment, Ernest. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know I was going to be second. Glad you have this timer. Uh, to make it very brief, uh, I, I'm in full agreement of your uh, motion to uh, request that Vilano uh, Regosa step, step down. Even though I don't think he will, he doesn't respect this commission. He doesn't even respect the board of supervisors. I really don't believe he was duly elected. That should be investigated. He should be in jail as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the other thing is that I've been uh, writing in to get funds for a specialized law enforcement for black Americans to <clears throat> police the sheriff's department. Uh, in fact, I want to make some citizens arrest. I don't need your permission to enforce the law when I've been violated, and especially in the courts, the probate court, Department 11. You have a deputy Thank there you. that's totally corrupt. Thank you. And the next comment comes from Mary Rachel Gardner. Please go ahead with your comment, Mary. Hi. Uh, let me know if you can't hear me. I you hear you. Of course, got a terrible connection. <laughs> uh, first, I want to acknowledge everybody in this commission. Thank you for existing. Uh, I found out about you guys about a couple months ago, actually, because I'm now officially a victim of a hate crime. And I know that there's more serious crimes going on out there, but my home was broken into. Uh, there's been a lot of criminal activity and a lot of this gang stuff that every to going on in East LA. Uh, I am a California native. I came from San Francisco down to LA to study at USC. Uh, it's 
incredibly disheartening to see what services are available for the LA city, the incorporated part of the county, and all of the unincorporated county. Everything on the east side has just been so ignored. And I ask that we, you know, pay attention to everybody. You know, there's a lot of LA natives and we can't, we gotta, we gotta unify. We gotta, we can't ignore any one side. Uh, there's a big part of uh, the community that's being ignored on the east side. Thank you. Thank you. And the next public comment will come from Stephanie Molin. Please go ahead with your comments, Stephanie. Stephanie Molin, you're unmuted. Please go ahead with your comment. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Stephanie Mullen, Associate Director with Strength United. Again, I just want to thank the Commission for the work that you're doing and the thoughtfulness. Um, and that's my comment at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Next comment will come from Mary Garcia. Please go ahead with your comment. Uh, yes, hello. Um, good afternoon. First thing I would like to thank um, the commit Commissioner Bonner for such a courageous, um, and accurate and eloquent statement um, that I think should really be considered. But I think you guys should probably ask yourselves the question as to um, as far as accountability, because who is to guarantee that the next person that steps in is going to follow through with and do their job accurately like they're supposed to. Um, there's also something that I wanted to mention regarding um, the overcrowding of jails. Um, I know this might be a little bit over your jurisdiction, but um, you know, people in prisons um, are not being allowed to parole. For instance, they're being kept even though that they are um, ready to be product productive members of society, and this is causing you know po uh, the jails, um, prisons to be overpopulated and crowded. And I think that is something that. Um, even though it's out of your jurisdiction, it is tied up to what we are living and going through today. So I ask that you consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Justin Porter. Please go ahead with your comment, Justin. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, my girlfriend just spoke earlier. That's uh, Mary Gardner. Uh, we're, we're residents of East LA and perfect personally, um, yeah, we, uh, we had our home broken into and the sheriff's response was it, they're just behind and their reporting is, is, is they, they, I feel like they, they need to pay more attention to detail when they're reporting and, and we're dealing with dispatch and yeah, again, we, we live in unincorporated part of the county that's pretty much ignored by pub, public works and, um, you know, th there's a lot of, there's a lot coming in and out of here that's out of our control and I could see how people are disheart disheartened by all of the red tape that we have to go through to get any kind of actions done over here. Otherwise, you know, I could see people are vigilante up themselves because of uh, the mistreatment. And I've been personally harassed by sheriff's deputies um, this year uh, too many times than I, than I can, can count. So I want to see some change uh, countywide. Thank you. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Carlos Montes. Please go ahead with your comment, Carlos. Uh, yes, uh, I spoke earlier, uh, Carlos Montes, I'm with uh, Centro CISO Community Service Organization. I totally support the movement to uh, demand that Villanueva, not Villaraigosa, somebody said, resign. He needs to be out. He is a rogue cop. He's a criminal. He's a member of the Banditos. We have it firsthand. I grew up and lived in East LA. I moved out of East LA because I got tired of harassing by the sheriffs. Uh, he needs to be ousted. He's going to continue to be rogue. He's going to say, I'm elected, so we may have to elect him out of there. You know, we, we demanded that Baca resign, and he finally got put in jail. So we need to do an independent investigation, maybe the FBI or the Attorney General on Villanueva, so we can find out what charges he could be charged with to use that as a vehicle to get him to resign. But I totally support, I look forward to making a public comment in support of a resolution in the future, demanding that Alex Villanueva resign. He is a disgrace. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Francis Orr. Please go ahead with your comment. Hello. Let me see if I can, you can hear me? We hear you. Please go ahead. Hello. Francis, we hear you. Please go ahead with your comment. Okay, um, hearing nothing, uh, the next comment will come from Regie Bunch. Please go ahead with your comment, Regie. 
Yes, there's a, there's a song that says, in times like, like these. And I'm so appreciative that that song came to my spirit because in times like these, we need to make very extreme measures because we face a very extreme and violent sheriff's department. And uh, Bonner, to call for the, for the resignation is actually the first step and other extreme measures that this call that this uh, commission needs to take. You know, the community has been calling for his, for his resignation for a long time, but the resignation is also one thing. And I'm also so appreciative of these other motions to call for the imp independent in investigations. I, I applaud, I applaud you all and keep on being strong. Please do not cower in the face of this man. He's making those strong steps, and you know the community. We're going to keep on fighting right along. With you. Thank you. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Ron Dowell. Please go ahead with your comment, Ron. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I applaud uh, Commissioner Bonner for his stance. But over the past ten years in Compton, from 2009 to 2000, 2018, there were 329 murders, including 54 from unincorporated areas. 131 or 40 percent were Latinx. 194 or 59% were black, five or 2% were white. 20, 28 suspects were arrested, which means that's 8% of the total. And we don't know how many among that number was actually convicted. If the sheriff is unable to take killers off the street, then there's another option that we have. And I propose a reward of $75,000 for each of those 301 murders for which a suspect has not been arrested and convicted, similar to the ones that's being posted for the uh, deputy shot and duties and the uh, boroughs who were killed in the Mojave Desert. Thank you. Thank you. And the next comment will come from Raul Rodriguez Jr. Please go ahead with your comment. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, I would like to start by saying that, um, you know, it's time that we start supporting law enforcement. We do have a few, a very small percentage that are not good for that position, but they are out there supporting us and they are keeping us safe from any crime and danger. I support ICE and I support all law enforcement. As Americans, we should be speaking out against what these groups are doing, and I'm talking about Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Especially the black community should be speaking out. So it's time that we as Americans take a stand and start supporting our law enforcement and start speaking out as to the lawlessness of these groups, Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Thank you very much. God bless America and God bless Donald Trump. And the next comment will come from Publius. Please go ahead with your comment. Thank you. I congratulate Judge Rob Broder for his comments and his call for the resignation of Alex Villanueva. I also want to um, make this Ms. Patty Gergens, I'm not sure to pronounce her last name. Why do you need two more weeks to decide on a resolution? Don't we have all the information we need to all the commissions? What are you waiting for? Lives are at stake. You should be worrying about your conscience. You should be losing sleep at night, wondering if another innocent civilian will be killed by the criminals posing as sheriffs before your next meeting. This is on your conscience. Every day that you do not demand Sheriff Villanueva's resignation is another day that another life may be taken. And I also think there should be cash rewards offered for anyone with information leading to the arrest and conviction of deputies that are part of these rogue gangs. Thank you. And the next will come from Genevieve Claverall. Please go ahead with your comment, Genevieve. Hello. Genevieve, we do hear you. Please go ahead with your comment. Well, I am um, very concerned what's going on, and I think that uh, you must demand that the sheriff attend those meetings, otherwise it's useless what we are doing. And just 
want you to keep on that road and not accept any change of that. And I know you in the past you have you thought about sending subpoena. I I think you should, and I should you should demand to be enforced. You know. And uh, you know, a lot of people demand to fire. You cannot fire him. He's an elected official. He has to be recalled. So, anyway, that's my two cents. Thank you for that comment. And the next comment will come from Francis Orr. Please go ahead with comment, Francis. Hi. Thank you so much for getting me back on here. Um, so, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, uh, to Bonner and Osen Ocean for uh, seconding this extremely um, thoughtful, and uh, we're just so relieved to hear you um, you talk about it. As one of the people who was brutalized by police on May 30th at the protest, who truly was just standing in front of someone else uh, who was trying to talk to police to body block, and I got the I just got beat up pretty good for it. Um, I'm really thankful that y'all are seeing. Um, the leadership that we have and being the leadership that we need. Um, last time they talked about uh, how MET should not get uh, defunded. And I think that they should make a list of programs they do think should go first um, because it's not going to be processing rape kits and it's not going to get be, you know, defunding things that actually help us. Uh, maybe it's taking them away from the police and making them independent companies like MET. But I think they need to help us defund them if they want to stay. Thank you. Next comment will come from Michelle Infante. Please go ahead with your comment. Thank you. Alex Villanueva is a fear monger. He uses scare tactics by telling the community that most misdemeanors have been released and the population left is mostly felons. They love posturing themselves physically in public and then um, using brutal violence against people in the community and killing them. That he enjoys putting out a false narrative for everything. And you know that. And I have much appreciation for Commissioner Bonner's statement that he made today regarding Alex Villanueva resigning. I've been watching what's happening to these families for the last six years, and it's sickening to come every month and see these people suffering. I appreciate your statement, your Thank work, you. your facts, and your honesty, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Bonner. And I, I, I just want to say thank you very, very much. Thank you for your. And next, we have Julie Martinez. Please go ahead with your comment, Julie. When you see us, when you hear us, please listen. OC are in a unique situation. You are in a position to create change, real substantive change that can actually make history. Please use your power to influence the County Board of Supervisors so they can recognize that for way too long, the Sheriff Department actually rules the County Board of Supervisors because they commandeer the county budget. The sheriffs control them by utilizing the tagline of community safety, just as a tool to hog important dollars. It's obvious that elected politicians always see law enforcement unit union endorsements as a necessary evil for election. When we as a community speak, it is important for you not only to listen to us, but to, to, but to believe us, believe us when we report legal activity and the lawlessness of the LA County Sheriff. Thank you very much, Bonner. Thank you. And the last public comment from Adriana Quinones. Please go ahead with your comments, Adriana. Um, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm very disappointed in Commissioner Bonner. Uh, he should have used this platform for positive comments, uh, working together between our communities, uh, law enforcement, and elected officials. So he definitely made a big mistake about this. As far as accountability, we all need to have accountability as a community. We need to stop being passive and we need to face the brown and brown um, crimes and black and black crimes. 
all problems are not due to law enforcement. So we have to be honest about that. Uh, as far as the jails, uh, we have to be careful as to who we are releasing. We have to look at their overall um, records. We don't want to release criminals that may jeopardize the safety of the community. Um, and as far as uh, some so-called leaders, community leaders, they are just uh, looking for problems, not really resolving anything. We do have one last person who has signed up for this um, item. Jacqueline Venters, please go ahead with your comment. Yes, I wanted to say this is an update on Tanel Billups, my son that was shot by the Sheriff Department five times in the back. Um, Inspector General sent the, a request. This is the fourth time to have an investigation. Sergeant John Gutierrez refused to do an investigation based on the evidence showing that um, it was a corruption. He told me to send it to the Department of Justice. Karen Ruckert from the Department of Justice says she's going to send it to the criminal department. She contacted me on top of giving her more information from my friends, uh, Isaac Berry and Ron McDowell. Thank you guys. The public defender's office said in two weeks, they're going to send me the documentation that Tanel has requested for nine years and they refused to send him. I want to thank you guys, and I'm just wondering what's going to happen after we get all this information. I'm going to make sure everybody get it as well as everything else that you guys have received. And God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And Chair Rubin, that does conclude all of our public comment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, thank you to um, all the members of the public who have spoken. Um, and thank you to the commissioners. And um, this meeting is now adjourned. The next meeting will be Thursday, October 15th. Um, and we'll see you all then. Thank you. Well. Thank you, Lyle. See you.